What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I am your host, Nick, joined by the household. We got sweet boy Justin, Leia, and Allie in Minneapolis or St. Paul, wherever the fuck you are. By a river. Uh, and uh, also, back in action, Nelly Joy. Woo! Uh, hello. Hello. Vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, an absolutely great episode. A really fun episode. Someone was just trying to hack into my PayPal account, and if it's you, I will find you. Watch out, Heidi and Spencer Pratt. <gasps> Do they they share the last same? It's like Heidi Pratt, right? And Spencer Pratt, or does Heidi have like a Heidi Montag? Heidi Montag. If you're asking Spencer for the pop Pratt. star, it's Heidi Montag. Heidi Montag. Okay. Montag. 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 Whew, boy, boy, we better. Whew. Sorry, Heidi. Spencer Pratt. Well, she it, Heidi she Montag. could not say your last name for yeah, life. Yeah, that's fine. So. Legends uh, in the reality TV community. Uh, lots of fun. They Hilarious. always they're always serving up great content. You are going to absolutely love this episode. I promise you that. Um, it's also just it's just so great to have you back in the saddle, babe. You know, it's fun making. Okay, content with he's you. got just these love. country sayings. He's got these cowboy boots on. He's feeling himself, baby. You're just like I'm. I'm morphing into the husband you want me to be. You know. <laughs> There, the, you were the husband I wanted you to be at September 2019, hun. For sure. Yeah. He, he did say something earlier. He said, he said a new sheriff's in town. <gasps> I did. Yeah. It's the boots. Okay. Period. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't taken them off. I got them for him for our welcome party for our wedding. And actually, I didn't get them for him. Tacova sent them yeah, to him. Thanks, Thank you, Tacova. But I did pick them out and force him to. To say yes, and he put them on and has not taken them I was off. a little uncomfy putting them on for the first time. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna be wearing hard cowboy boots, but I look good in them, you know. Uh, I can't help but notice when you um, walk. Is there like a sound effect? It's definitely weird. They're very weird. Okay, uh, I'm getting used to them for sure. Also, like you can spin on them really easily, like from a line You've dance. Been spinning? Well, no. I mean, like you said, we have to go line dancing, and then I was like, wait, these are kind of either easy to pivot on, you know. How often are you pivoting, baby? I just. I'm just, I'm breaking them in. Okay. Yeah. Break away. He's you think, breaking you think, free. Yeah. You think I look good? No, I think you look great. Uh, super cute. Some housekeeping notes before we uh, get into all the other things we want to talk about before we get to Heidi and Spencer. Uh, next week on Going Deeper, we have the one, the only, following the Love is Blind reunion, which drops next Wednesday, the day after. We have yours truly, A.D., with us. We now know that she was left at the altar. We're sad for A.D. We're not necessarily surprised. Clay was begging for her to break up with him. He didn't. He, he, he was forced to do it begrudgingly. Um, but obviously, we fell for A.D. Uh, we were big fans of A.D. this season. I think she was you know, the star of this season, quite frankly. And we are lucky to have her exclusive post-reunion interview. She is with us in studio. Uh, that's next Thursday, so uh, get ready for that. It is a good one. You will not want to miss it. And then next week's guest on Going Deeper. I don't want to say it quite yet, but we're excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. As always, we're doing great things here at The Wild Files. All right, what are we getting into before we get to uh, Heidi and Spencer? Can I just say a little insider scoop? about Love is Blind. They are currently filming in Minneapolis for season eight, I believe. Uh -huh. And yep. it is turning this city upside down. The shit that's already come out about certain people who are on the cast is wild. On TikTok, yeah. Yeah, we, we are heard. aware. We heard the uh, the uh, cast list leaked um, for Minneapolis. You know, here's my opinion about generally this stuff. I think there are a lot of clout chasers and wannabe stars. And I generally think when it comes to this stuff, um, be careful what you believe this season some girl went super viral on tiktok pretending to be in a relationship with one of the contestants and things like that uh i heard about something about the minneapolis one i think there was one girl who i don't know exactly even what she said she said x y or z but buried in their comments was a comment from her saying she hopes the bachelor producers see this so they can and consider cast and cast her for their show huh it's like wow. these people can't help but be obvious about their clout chasing. So just take what you see with a grain of salt because, um, yeah, there's a lot of wannabes out there. 
Uh, and I say this as a Midwest kid myself from the great city of Milwaukee, but like uh, there's some sur- thirsty, thirsty beavers in the Midwest who just je- desperate, you know, they would be excited to be in the five o'clock news. So imagine they get to say that they knew someone who's going to be on Love is Blind and yada, yada, yada. Do you know anyone on it? Our parents are friends. Cute. Oh, your your parents are friends with one of the guys who's on Love is Blind. Okay. Zezio one. All right. What are we getting into? Did you hear? About Haley Bieber's sister. I did, yeah. Well, it was right off the heels of Daddy Stephen. Stephen, uh, I really, I only know Stephen Baldwin from the movie Biodome. Don't mm. even know that. Yeah, well, it's an old movie. He plays like this stoner pothead, and so I will always see him as that character. <laughs> anyway, uh, we know we all know that he asked Christians to pray for his daughter Haley and Justin. Only Christians. He did not want any other prayers. Yes, he asked Christians only. Christians only to pray <laughs> for his daughter and his son-in-law. Who seemed to be fine. Who seemed fine. They seemed fine. Yeah, they were seen like leaving church. Uh, church. Justin was very covered in Christians his face. always covered. Mm, yeah, I, to an extent, I guess. But so I, who knows what that's about. But yeah, it comes off the heels of him asking for prayers. Maybe some misdirection. And then I am. it happened in Savannah, Georgia, mm-hmm. my hometown, some would say. I would say half the time. The other half the time, it is Auburn, Alabama. <laughs> but in Club Elon, which is definitely where I used to pass back a fake ID and get into that bitch. Didn't you take me to that place? Club Elon? Absolutely not. It is like horrendous is now. Is it the basement place? No. That's okay. Barrel House. Club Elon is like a massive, massive warehouse that like oh, yeah. is so hard to fill because it's just so big. So you walk in and you're like, oh my God, this place is dead. But that's where they have I, I think I saw um, Nelly perform there. Ooh. Pop off. Yeah. They have, they kind of get some performers. Anyways, she was there. Okay. And from what I heard from my best friend Chambliss, she has someone who was involved on her Snapchat and she's on their private Snapchat. So she really got the tea. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And story is Alia was drunk and she's like i need to go to the bathroom like let me use that bathroom and they're like it's an employees only bathroom you can't and she was like i just need to throw up and change my tampon and so the bartender which is like a reasonable request no for sure yeah and which like shockingly the bartender's like okay fine like be quick and so she goes into the bathroom and i guess she's in there for forever and so then people start you know security gets involved they're like you got to come out for some reason, she changed her tampon, but she did not flush the tampon. She put tampon in pocket Ooh. and Wait, exited dirty a used tampon? one. Her used tampon that she removed from herself into her pocket and exited the bathroom. Do you know bathroom. this to be true? Yes. How, how do you? Because the victim is speaking out. <laughs> Who's the victim? The bartender is the saying bartender. the same thing. She was pulled out of the bathroom, kicking, screaming, crying, and pulls her. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're lucky. Pulls, pulls said tampon out of pocket and flicks it up and oh. hits the bartender's cheek and it like blood streak on her cheek. So that was the assault? Yes. <gasps> yes. Oh, God. Oh it's God. so ironic because Hailey Bieber is clean girl aesthetic. She is known for being Miss Clean Girl and her sister is carrying her dirty tampon in her pocket. She's like the anti clean girl. Anti clean like, girl. It's like a comic book story. What did did her dad ask for prayers for her? No, I don't think I've heard him speak out about her in quite some time. Ooh. She was drunk. Not to like give her yeah. the defense, but like I, Yeah. It's not as crazy as doing that sober. Um <gasps> it's still pretty crazy. Like maybe she thought the pocket was the trash. 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 Toilet. You are an empathetic <laughs> sweet. Yeah. That's why well, we call you sweet, 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 no, sweet, 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 Are you flushing flush tampons? Oh, so no. maybe, maybe she was being considered. She probably, being considered. she went no, into no, the bathroom. No, throwing their bloody tampon she, in a trash can. She went you into the bathroom. You're not letting flush them. Flush them. Who is letting that you sit in their trash can? Me. No, you can't jail right. her. She oh, saw what? a sign that she saw a sign that said, <laughs> yeah. "Please do not, do not flush, flush your tampons." Said, By the way, so being the rule follower, every bathroom being the rule, being the rule follower that she is, she tucked that into her little pocket. 
And then got angry when everyone started yelling at her and was like, well. You know what? Fuck it. I tried following your rules. Honestly, I feel like I'm team, uh, what's her name? Aliana? Alea? 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 No. Alea? 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 Terrible. Terrible. Anyways, the bartender did sell her story to TMZ for $300. <laughs> As she should. <laughs> Wait, Nick, I feel like you should look into your plumbing if Natalie's been flushing yeah, tampons. You can't you flush flushing? tampons down the toilet. Okay, poll. Because I feel we like do absolutely need, we, not. we absolutely need. need By the new, way, we do need new toilets. I did not flush tampons down the toilet at my house when I was growing up, but someone did, and we had a massive plumbing issue, and it was because Wait, of are the you tampon. Flushing? I have always flushed tampons. I'm not letting that that blood sit in my trash well, can. You, well, you can we get some week. sort of biodegradable can, <laughs> trash can? So I'm just, my, my trash we can is filled up with a week's we worth have, of dirty tampons. We have, a special, a <laughs> we have a special garbage can for our daughter's poopy diapers and they don't seem to be bothering okay, anyone. No, the, the plumbing issue is not me. Don't blame that on me because it's every single toilet and you use every single toilet in that house. And yeah, so it's a you We problem. have shitty toilets, but this isn't helping. <laughs> this is on shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your fault. Not mine. <laughs> I'm a dainty little princess who doesn't do anything gross <laughs> i'm a little lady Natalie but doesn't poop but that is i can't believe that y'all are throwing them in the trash can it's kind I, of absolutely it's kind of a power move for her to throw it at someone is it not uh, it's, it's like a you're, really you're gonna drag me out thing to do <laughs> Here's like, my tampon. Yeah. I wouldn't do the that. The fact to my that worst she enemy. was probably trying to follow their rules. The fact that she's ruined her pocket. It's now it's got her blood yeah. sitting in it. Oh my god! It's there's so many things that <laughs> are wrong. At least carry a ziploc. I mean, I, I, I think you should always have a ziploc bag with you at all times. You just never know when you might need to. What? Something. <laughs> the True. That's a great way of sneaking alcohol into a concert. Could a be that ziploc bag. A ziploc maybe. bag of booze, and you put it in your bra, and you kind of balance it between your titties. What? Then metal detectors won't find it. Are you still doing this? I know I pay you enough to <laughs> try your own <laughs> alcohol. Concerts Speaking have like $20 drinks. That's true. Speaking of Nick is back. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> I'm just... Oh, you're not? I had a cheat days. Days? <laughs> <laughs> he gotta... said it's... You know that's going to be a headline. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure it is. <laughs> Nick Bile can't give up even though he promised his daughter he would never <laughs> and he's such an addict. <laughs> Literally, he was like, it's the weekend. And I was like, all right, whatever. He had his friend over. I was like, okay, come on, sure. Enjoy your weekend. And then he was like, it's a Monday. And I was like, okay, I get it. Mondays are hard. And they had he's leftovers. Like, he's like, there I'm were just leftovers. And Monday it. was a hard day. Monday was a hard day. There was a lot going on. <laughs> Whose side are we on here? <laughs> I will say, I miss a lot. Because uh, you're proud. Sorry. Yeah. Have yeah. We, we have an, is this public information? We've announced. Okay, I think, yeah, I think, I think mm -hmm. I mentioned it. Yeah. But I did uh, pick River up and sh face her towards Nick in the backyard. Oh, sorry. You can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's the story of Savannah. Everyone's like freaking out about it. Small town. Everyone's thrilled. Everyone's thrilled. Also because she had no idea who she was. Which I'm kind of shocked. I feel like this girl definitely would be like, I'm Haley Bieber's sister. But apparently for she her, didn't. She did not. Yeah. Apparently she didn't. And she did not know who she was until all the headlines. And then she was like, wait, no, I'm actually pushing. I'm pressing charges. I'm suing. Oh, and they sold the story for $300. $300. How do we know it's for $300? That's, it's just the, the talk of the town, babe. Inside. Okay. Talk of the town. And we're, we're comfortable with these numbers? I mean, if she wants to come out and be like, no, I sold it for $500. Though, okay, pop off. <laughs> But like, I think 300 for selling your story. Well, who sold it? Not, hit, not no, the, the, bartender. the bartender, bartender who got oh. hit in the face. Got hit in the face. I wonder if she wanted her dad to ask for prayers for her and she was just feeling. Acting out. Acting yeah, she's out. acting out. Where are my Christian prayers? Yeah. Christians what only. What about me? Yeah. <laughs> Poor girl. It's just so weird to be like Christians. Please pray. Like prayers are good wherever they're coming from. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Jewish, Shana. Muslim, Buddhist, yeah, pray thought, for thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Should we be praying for Sheena? We should be praying for okay. Sheena because yeah. she just got sole rights of the house. So Brock sold his rights to her, basically, or not sold, sold but transferred. Up. He transferred it, so he did an interpersonal, interspousal transfer grant deed. Oh, I don't even think that's why we're praying for Sheena. I thought it was because the internet is roasting her for this most recent I mean, episode of APR, which we'll get into on Tuesday of Reality Recap. But uh, continue, sweet boy Justin. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no. So this is the grant deed. So basically, it's a fancy name for a quit claim deed for married couples. Usually when a spouse signs this, it is part of an agreement and a divorce. And a, one of their a family law attorney, Goldie Sean, came out and said that. That's no way that's a real name. Goldie Sean? No way. Goldie Sean. 
It's giving lawyer. It's giving Goldie Hawn. It's giving Hawn. Goldie Hawn. Yeah. It's like a drag there is name no for way, someone who impersonates Goldie There is no Goldie way a Hollywood Hawn. lawyer whose name is Goldie Sean is actually, that's her actual name. Like a campy, Maybe, I could be wrong. lawyer. I'm going to go. Goldie is on the 2024 most popular, or 2023 most popular girl's name list. So. Amazing. Well, this person, I'm guessing, Family was attorney. not born. I'm sh- sure. I'm just saying <laughs> old names are coming back. Yeah. No, I know. I, it's not the Goldie part. It's the Sean part. Okay. Well, this drag Anyways. queen, Goldie, <laughs> said that this filing could hint at an impending bankruptcy or divorce as the transfer document is not typically signed by couples buying a new home. Do you think it's divorce or bankruptcy? Mm, or, you know, listen, I, I think Sheena has spoke on this. Um, Sheena has been divorced. I think when you're a public figure making money, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit more unnerving. And like Brock uh, doesn't, come across as the most self-sufficient financial person and maybe it's just like a hey man like i love you but like i also i got to protect my interests and i've already i've already had this go wrong once so you know we're married for love not for financial gain you know and it could be that you know i don't know if it necessarily means impending divorce but when this lawyer also says the person who no longer has the house is the one that files for bankruptcy to get rid of the debt so it could just be a financial so he could be transferring it so he files for bankruptcy and then they keep the house so yeah they're not going to get divorced but maybe he has debt that they're tired of having and this is a maneuver that they're going to do i feel like this stuff always happens and nobody knows what it means and everyone's just guessing that's probably true so we're all just like they're all like, a lawyer thinks, a lawyer said. It's like, okay, no one knows. The house yeah. is like down the street from here. Should we go? They all live here. They all live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're all our neighbors. Yeah. I know we'll get into the episode, but I was not a fan of Brock in this episode. Why Brock? I haven't watched it yet. I usually watch the Vanderpump on the weekends. I, I've, I've been watching the internet and I'm very familiar with Sheena's outburst in her. She just is, it's. She can't help herself making anything about her. You know, the lines of, she knew I wanted to be on, I'm happy for, I'm, I'm so happy for her. She knew I wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars. Like, you, that's, you, that's not how you're happy for someone. No, you she's get, been You gotta leave that, that sentence out, you mm-hmm. know? Because otherwise it just sounds like an IOU. Like, like as if Ariana is supposed to be guilty or that somehow Ariana being offered and accepting a Dancing with the Stars gig is somehow like, Something that she is supposed to apologize to Sheena for, which is like, she just can't help herself. What, what did Brock do, by the way? I'm sorry. He also just always wants to pick a fight or, you know, there was a moment where they had to sit back to back and Tom and Sheena were next to each other. So they had to sit back to back and she specifically asked Brock to come join. And he's like, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm pretty sure that Brock and Sheena practice their scenes. I just... You know, I, I, and I don't even, I, I don't even say that with criticism, you know, I think, uh, you know, Tom Sandoval's life is messy enough where he doesn't have to practice. He just has to be vulnerable. Well, Brock and Sheena, I think they kind of want to be part of the storyline. So they force storylines. Yeah. I don't know, but we will definitely get into it on, uh, on Tuesday, an episode of reality recap, but the, the, the Sheena memes are popping off today on the internet and they are fun. Is it only about her comment of she knew I wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars and I was genuinely happy for her? Is it only I th- and, that? and there's a preview apparently for next week's oh. episode where she, uh, I believe, says something to the effect of Ariana's come a long way since she was my backup dancer. So there's yeah, these kind of right. passive aggressive. I think she does need to get a pass for her struggling with like her friendship with Tom, I do think that's valid that she like is struggling with the fact that she lost someone that she considered a best friend and like she's struggling with I don't know like how to maneuver that because I'm also friends with Ariana and I don't want to hurt her and I like I think that's a valid point to be struggling and I think that does need to be acknowledged and like not shit on. But the comments that she has made, I I do think yeah yeah, yeah. That's, but that's I don't know it's it's part of growing up. I mean sometimes you have to yeah but she's forced to see him all the time. So it's not like she could just cut him out of her life and be like, yeah, whatever. It's like she's forced to see him and also like still hold this grudge. But like we used to be so close. And But but Ariana. And, uh, uh, uh. Katie is forced to see him. She doesn't. But she wasn't as close to him as Sheena was. Yeah. But like sometimes you just have to pick a side. All Ariana seems to be doing is nothing. She's just like, this is my new boundary, you know, and 
Like, it, she's just like, I just don't want to be friends with them. And, you know, she's making people make tough choices, but that's part of growing up. I don't know. Yeah. I get, I, I get that it's hard for her, but like, it's just how she goes about it. She doesn't ever, she doesn't know how to help herself. Is Tom Schwartz growing up? He has a girlfriend. Or an well, it depends on who you ask. It That's true. How you ask. <laughs> yeah, but he was seen around Vegas with Sophia, a 23 year old recent graduate. Is that all she is? Just a recent graduate? That's what we know because people know who she is. She personally. hasn't had time to do anything else. Yeah. Well, well, that's not. I'm 25, yeah. and I've done a lot in life. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. not, I've not fell off off my list. <laughs> I just think it's kind of hysterical. Tom Schwartz was always going to date someone in this age bracket, and I kind of, you know, so were you? I no, I'm. Fuck, I'm Team Tom Swartz here. Uh, I find it hilarious that the internet is going to lose their shit and they're going to talk shit and they're going to try to mock Tom. I should reach out to Miss um, what's, so- Sophia and, and be like, babe. And, uh, you know, he's I not going to give through this. You know, he's not going to give two fucks, Tom Swartz. That's true. Yeah. He was uh, smiling. He, he looked is, happy. Yeah, he looks, he looks happy making TikToks and. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. Lala think... Kent's pregnant and I am so very happy for her. She deserves yeah. so many babies. How did she, is that an appropriate question? How did she get Sperm pregnant? Donor. It was she talked donor. about it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. yeah, she talked about it on her podcast, I believe. Um, but yeah, I saw a clip of it and she was saying that she found out like December of last year that she was pregnant. And Good. now she's in, you know, she had to wait till she got out of her first trimester. But it's like so exciting. That's so exciting. I know, for her. I love that for her. Yeah, growing that fam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's also backing Britney in the separation between Britney and Jack on Watch What Happens Live. She said, leave him. Yeah. Also, we do have a little Britney and Jack's tea in this episode with Spencer and Heidi, um, who had a little insight. They had a rendezvous with Mr. Jack's Taylor recently. And so they gave some insight into whether they think this breakup is real or fake. So never thought that we'd get that tea from Heidi and Spencer. But hey, the timing was just right. Speaking of tea, queer eyes Jonathan Van Ness. Oh, there we go. There's that transition. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were called emotionally abusive. They had rage issues, and then it was a alu- it was alluded that Burke's Burke leaving the show was because of his actions or his behavior. Ooh, yeah. And Jonathan is the one that does the hair and like the yeah, yeah. the makeovers. Yeah, there's definitely a hierarchy of, of of stars amongst that cast, and I think we always like assume like these ensembles, kind of like almost like a boy band. You you assume everyone's best friends or teammates on a on a sports team. I think you the casual fan always assumes oh they're teammates, they're best friends. Oh they're in a band, they're best friends, and often is the case they're not. They're just they're coworkers, they're colleagues. You know the ensemble cast of Queer Eye were individually casted. And got together, were probably very excited at first, but like they've had different successes in their career. There's got to be so much ego. Uh, I've interacted with all of them at some point, and like some of their requests have been, in terms of working with them or not working with them, have been of the they must see themselves as A list celebrities uh, versus Bobby. Bob, was so down to earth. So down to earth. So him. lovely. Cause I remember like letting him into the parking garage and talking with him. And there was like even a slight comment of like, Oh, my co-stars have done X, Y, and Z, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. Like yeah. he never wanted to act like he was deserving of all these things. I mean, Anthony is like best friends with Gigi Hadid and Taylor Swift. He's been in. The... So imagine the competition between him hanging out with Taylor Swift and the rest of the, the cast of Queer Eye, um, you know, the Eagles involved. But... I thought Bobby, when he said why he was leaving Queer Eye, mentioned, you know, that their, their contracts weren't renewing and that at one point he thought everybody was going to be leaving and then he was a little surprised to see that everybody was staying except for him. And then he mentioned that in the past he's had conflict with Pam. So I don't know, this is interesting now that this article's come out about Jonathan because maybe it contributed to Bobby leaving as well, which Has is... Jonathan responded at all yet? Because, like, that's other cra- those are some accusations. Like, I'm not totally surprised. I think they have been on their high horse recently, and I think they have seen themselves as almost untouchable. And, uh... So they have not responded yet, but this article did get released just over a day ago. That's kind of a long so, time in the in the zeitgeist of media. They are definitely hoping it blows over. That's for sure. I do love watching Jonathan on my television screen, though. 
Why? Such a joy to watch. Well, they aren't exactly who they claim to be, mm. maybe. Uh, yeah, well, apparently on uh, TikTok, uh, super fans have discovered that uh, Jimmy was in the reflection of Chelsea's glasses. We now know that they did not work out on the show. The show. But there's no, maybe, maybe a reconciliation. You know, maybe Jimmy really does love Chelsea. Maybe she calmed down. Maybe after the cameras went away, she, you know, acted more normal. I just think a lot of these people just need to, like, the... Decompress? No, they just need to date. Like, I think that's why, the, that's what the issue is. Like, the pressure of getting married. You're like, oh, fuck that. I can't get married. But, and then once all the cameras are done and all this stuff, and they're like, wait, you're actually kind of fun to hang out with. What if we just go on a couple dates yeah. and see what happens? Or maybe they're just friends, too. Like, they all did, you know, share this very unique experience, and they only have each other to bond over. So maybe, you know, this has been a, a year since they filmed. Maybe they're just like, cool. Maybe they're just friends. Right. I'm, guess, I'm guessing that's what it is. I'm guessing that they're just friends and they were hanging out. I think they're probably not dating um, is my guess. Do you think there's a benefit or a hindrance to how long it takes them to release the footage? Because it's like, they they're every time we have one of these reunions, it's like, oh, well, a year's gone by and I'm now with someone else. Like, I just feel like we lose that same sense of like, where are they now? Oh, because yeah. So much time has passed. No, it's, I think it's a huge hindrance. I think, you know, you mentioned them fi uh, filming Minneapolis. I think that's episode season eight. eight for them. I think they they film back to back seasons. So like, I think in the pods, they do two seasons at once. That's kind of been their M.O. So. They could be filming season nine right now. They could be three years out from airing these episodes. That must be Crazy. torture because for I the cast. Because I think DC, they wrapped in that season seven. So that has to come out before any of this Minneapolis stuff does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and if they, you know. Then that makes sense that they would be hanging out because for a whole year, these are the only people that they can talk to about these things. You only, know, yeah. like the such a huge part of their life. life. They can they only can't talk, talk about it. Yeah. They only have each other for to hang out With For a year. That's a long Some time. Some of these. But that's some of these sh ones are they have, it's over a year. That's not so right now, for example, yeah. they're filming two seasons. So one's going to come out before the other. So even though they've started filming the same time, one's going to have to wait at least six months longer and maybe a year longer than the other one. And they're both going to have to wait at least a year. So one of these current seasons filming are going to have to wait two years. That's crazy. But I, they gotta I, fix that. I think that's I think that's a distributor problem, not a uh, production problem. You know, that would be more of a because Netflix has all the say on like when things are released and when they're not. Like, you know, so that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves is waiting like a year. Like, where where is Handmaid's Tale? Does anyone know? Oh, I don't know. Man. Yeah, these shows that uh, drop a season a year after it's just like I, I forgot how. <laughs> No, I rarely come How back. How are we? Yeah. Yeah, I just can't. Especially with reality TV because so many people go on their press stores. Yeah, give us more Netflix. Yeah. We'll watch, like, man. Just come on. We're starving. <laughs> Don't let us move starving. on. You know? Yeah, I just watched Dune 2 and I okay. realized I completely forgot everything that happens in Dune, Dune 1, 1 and yeah. I was just very lost. I heard it's very It was good, good though. It was good, good, but it took me a second to be like, huh? Who are these people? What are these? Well, you could have gone back and watched Dune The one. last one came out like a year ago, right? No more than that. Really? So, yeah, yeah, movies are different. Movies, yeah. it's like, okay, a quick little two hours. It's like fun. Let's reminisce. But a whole season of something that, I, I don't have a time whole, for that. five season, like Handmaid's Tale. It's like, shit, man. God, yeah. They make recaps. Those recaps but, gotta be yeah. <laughs> real detailed. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, it's time for Heidi and Spencer. Before we do, don't forget to send in those questions at AskNick at thefilefiles.com for all things texting office hours and Ask Nick. Don't forget to check out an amazing Ask Nick episode that dropped on Monday. And our reality recap episode uh, this past Tuesday, which was a lot of fun. We get into all the Vanderpump Housewives, Bachelor, Love is Blind. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Again, next week, Thursday, we have the one and only AD from Love is Blind talking about her entire experience post-filming and the reunion. It's an episode you definitely do not want to miss. And then next week's guest, I know you will be excited about. Uh, and we'll share it, you know. Maybe next week. We'll see. Anyways, it's time for Heidi and Spencer. Art
article. Oh, baby, tell me about the article. Tell me why you love it. Tell we me. are obsessed with article. We have article all over our house, all over our backyard. They have the best mid-century modern coastal industrial boho designs. They make furniture shopping so simple and it's so fun. They offer fast, affordable shipping across the U.S. and Canada. We see article trucks going through our neighborhood all the time. All the, our neighbors across the street, they, their entire house is furnished by article. And it must be because they listen to this podcast. Well, obviously. Obviously. In our backyard, we have these beanbag like lounge chairs that best. sit by our pool. They're so comfortable. Beanbag is underselling it. They're like fancy, modern, adult, comfy beanbags. They're, they're incredible. Is what they but are. picture like the best beanbag possible mm. in a lounge chair yeah. and set it beside a pool in the heat of summer. Wow. Iconic. They got the best stuff, the best selection, and they actually have inventory. You know, if you're looking for furniture, you can get it in a couple of weeks as opposed to like the six, seven weeks uh, lead time that other furniture companies have. And their prices are insanely affordable. It is shocking what they charge you for the type of quality that you're getting with Article. I mean, you know why that is? Because they're cutting out the middleman. They don't have any of these lame showrooms, you know, just shop online. They make the shopping experience easy and convenient. And if for some magical reason you're not in love with your Article furniture, no problem. They make the returns and exchanges process super easy and convenient for you. Solve all your sh furniture shopping needs with Article. It doesn't matter what you're looking for, furniture, bedroom, dining room, outside, uh, something for your kids, something for, I don't know, yourselves. Upgrade your furniture today with Article. Article is offering our listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash V-I-A-L-L, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash V-I-A-L-L for $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Article.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Zoa, you have got to check out Zoa. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's energy drink Zoa just launched a brand new campaign. It's all about the BDE. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. It's the big Dwayne energy. They've got a really awesome new commercial that you can check out at Zoa's Instagram or YouTube channel. Zoa Energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. When you drink Zoe Energy drinks, it gives you the big Dwayne energy, which gives you that swag, confidence, and energy to help you conquer your day. Here at the Vile Files, my team has loved Zoa Energy to give them that extra boost they need to get through their days with ingredients that enhance energy levels, Zoe Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape, which just happens to be one of my team's favorites along with their delicious Cherry Limeade. Get some big Dwayne Energy in your life and order Zoa Energy today. Available online and at stores near you. Find out where you can find it at ZoaEnergy.com and find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. Uh, Heidi Spencer, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks I'm for coming. I've been excited to. I've been excited. I've been in the back of my mind. I'm like, I need to get Heidi and Spencer on the show. He thinks about y'all a lot. Wow, what an honor. I re I respect you guys truly. Thank you. Uh, you know, thank you. Do you hear that a lot? You know, a, a <laughs> lot actually. In my comment section mainly. Yeah, yeah. Just, the respect I have for Spencer know, Pratt is unmatched. Just, you know, one TikTok can sway the public now. Right That's now, true. I'm doing really well thanks to the Montana boys. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, you know, seven million views on TikTok. Oh, you wow. can just switch the whole public. Everyone's like, I hated you so much. Now I love you. I'm like, oh, well, thanks, Montana boys. I have, I said uh, on Tuesday's episode, previewing your guys as a parent that the reason why I say I respect you guys is well you got your start on reality TV and I think I often get asked and approached by other reality TV personalities you know for advice and yada 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 and I always say to them the thing that's the hardest to do that you'll probably you know you I'll tell you my advice you probably won't listen but it's consistency and authenticity that's what makes reality TV stars really successful and have a staying power. And you guys have both of those. Like you're authentically who you are and you're consistent with who you are. And for all your peaks and valleys, for all your criticism and praise, that's why you've been able to stick around is because you've always been authentically consistent. And I don't know what you have to say about that. That's very true. That... You know, consistency is my new favorite word, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've, I've, I, for real, I, okay. it is because I learned from uh, TikTok battling 
that the top TikTok battlers are consistent. And I was like, man, if I could just be consistent in anything. And when you say battlers, you mean like going toe to toe on TikTok, TikTok with some sort, some sort of drama? Oh, well, TikTok Live. So like a year ago when I first saw it, it's, it was a lot different. Now it's kind of saturated. Like now two years ago, there was this thing called the ranks and these streamers were, it was so competitive and there was teams and somehow one night late, I was just watching the Island Boys, the original boys, <laughs> and they were like doing a TikTok battle. And I was like, what is this? And so I just clicked, like joined as like, see what's going on. The next thing you know, all these things are popping up my screen. Everyone kept on like, make sure you check out on your PayPal after. I'm like, what are they talking about? <laughs> so when it ended, like a thousand bucks, I was like, oh my God, these people are <laughs> sending me real money. So then I was like, Heidi, I hit the lotto. <laughs> so I cut to me not like leaving the internet for, you know, who's now gets trolled a lot for it. And I, you know, I support him. I've thrown him some roses and maybe even a couple of galaxies as Jason Nash uh, from the vlog squad is oh. a big battler now. Oh, really? Yeah. And he's Jason, getting, I love, love yeah, Jason. He's, he's getting a lot of negativity, but Why? because people think it's like um, digital panhandling, but it is though, isn't it? No, because yeah. if it was that easy, Every like, well, I, that's a good point. Go not, live and try to get people to give you money. It's so it's hard, so much harder. So, it's how easy. much are you making so from this? I, I only did it for a quick little window, you know, pre baby. You can't be a TikTok battler if you have a baby. What it's is your response when people send you? I saw a girl on TikTok live doing um, every time someone sent her like a cat, a cat or something, she'd be like, Meow. So, those are those, those are NPC streamers when you oh. do like the sound effect type okay. thing. I was more just like the tequila streamer, so I would just be like, drinking and just so you would just be like thank you for the roses oh no i would just be we'd be in a battle i'll be screaming so oh it's my gosh. two people that match right so it's one team versus the other and it's also kind of like gambling so you're throwing money and lions and things to see whose team wins and it used to be that you would be the winner for a week right they try they try to get you to the top for a week so you're racing this podium and people are addicted to it like the audience is addicted First of all, it becomes like a family. You all know each other. You're in the chat. It's also very dramatic with your gifters because it becomes an entitlement thing. Like they almost feel like they're owning you as a team mm -hmm. player and it becomes this whole oh, thing. Bet. And then yeah. they have inside chats. And then some of the people are dating their Sending wow. gifters. Nudes and I mean, and it's that's like why it's hard. Like being married, not hard, it's blessed. But like <laughs> these dudes are, you know, it's a lot easier to get gifters when you're sending all these dick pics out, you know, oh. like type stuff i don't play that game so i have to be just a normal battler but but they loved spencer on it and all the ranks he was one of the first celebrities to start on it and, ah! and people were getting so <laughs> mad all the other gifters were getting so mad but spencer was immediately one of the top people and was one of the people who could break into it now it's almost impossible it's, a, it's really hard these people are making 20 grand a day a, oh a night a night yeah like twenty thousand dollars a yeah. night so what I'm talking about doesn't exist anymore because they made it so it was like fair because it was so locked in and I broke right into the top. And this is when you could get 4,000 people live in a stream. So you have 4,000 people mm -hmm. against somebody that's got 10,000 and there was all these stakes to it. Now yeah, it's a little, it's not as exciting. So long story short is when I learned if I just do anything, you can make so much money. So. Thank, thank God for that rundown. Um, what did you think? <laughs> you know, we got to lock it in here. Yeah, yeah. I honestly don't even know what you guys just talked about, but I'm also fascinated. But I'm into it's, it. Yeah, yeah I'm into it. Natalie's favorite thing to do, her favorite pastime, is to watch TikTok lives. Before of, I had a baby. I don't have time now. Uh, yeah. Before so she busy. had a baby. Uh, but uh, of some of the weirdest people. I mean, she would be like, Nick, look about. at this. And I'd be like, why are you watching this person? It, I don't know why you watch it. It's it's very interesting. It's, it's addicting, it is. too. They make it addicting. It is. That, it's yes, like, I it's do a know a lot about social media. It's like people like karaoke singing in their bathroom, like in a small town in Delaware. Like or the like... least <laughs> self-aware people ever. And they're online, just proud and loud. What did you uh, think of the Montana Boys TikTok with Miss Kristen Cavallari? I was one of the best videos I've watched in years. <laughs> I think Cinematic. we've watched it a thousand times. I was just going to say, I think we've watched it one million times. It gets better times. each time. Like a million you know? of the views are from YouTube. Yeah, like it is. <laughs> yeah. I knew she, I kept, I, now looking back, because I we follow her, and I was like, what is she training for? Because she was like working out, like when Heidi had her like hydroxy cut campaign, you got to work out. Like a pro athlete, I'm like, what is Kristen training for? And then I realized it was the reveal 
with the Montana boys lifting her up in the thong in Mexico was what she was training for. <laughs> and it, you know, it all worked out, but it's like, Oh, you know, it all God, came full yeah. circle. So it's like, what is going on? Like, really training hard. But if you have a 24 year old Montana boys, <laughs> you got to you you keep up. You got to be keep trained up. up yeah, well, she's looking great. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. she's she supporting. Great. You know, I'm in the comment section arguing with everybody about it. I was shocked. I, uh, when she's I coming first on the show, and I think in a couple of weeks. And uh, I low key suggest. I said, uh, your, your your new boyfriend's Bring welcome him. to make a cameo. To no surprise, she's going to come solo. Uh, um, but we will be able to talk about it with her. We are anxious to uh, talk with Kristen, friend of show. She's definitely putting it out there, you uh, know? which we love. We... Yeah. So it's like the when the um, TikTok she did about what are you going to do? Arrest me. Yeah. about dating the 24 yeah, year old yeah, so she's that. we're not in a position to criticize an age it. gap you know so that's true you're like role models uh, in, that's what we like we like to think that we truly yeah. influenced her and bradley cooper and Gigi indeed yeah. age gap there as well yeah. you know i think i feel like you know it's it's age gaps are met with lots of criticism and yet we've uh, and they looked at us and they said they can fight that you know, criticism so yeah. can we look at the love they've created yeah. this beautiful child they're yeah. thriving we're uh, we're here to give the age gap community a more of a the positive appropriate spin. age gap community. Yeah, appropriate. The, yeah. the, the is there legal. an inappropriate? Oh, oh. Okay. Well, just like okay. the the illegal ones. Okay, you know, I would <laughs> probably say yeah. it's like, inappropriate. Is there a restriction? <laughs> the ones that started. You know, we <laughs> there's a lot of false rumors about our our beginning of our relationship. Yeah, it did oh, it start... was criminal initially. <laughs> yeah, well, they say the rumors are that it started when I was like. You know, nineteen. Or yeah, something or... some. But I was twenty one. Oh. Also, nineteen, 19 would is be legal. legal. There's illegal, and then there's like legal weird. I feel like the teen after my, the nineteen. You that's, know, maybe that's a it... non-starter. Mm. Yeah. I was I, nineteen you know, when I we want, met. I've heard eighteen but he was is legal. What? I follow the law. 23, 22. <laughs> 22. You're by yeah. the book. Yeah, like, guy. It's like I, yeah. I don't get past all. Is that semantics? I don't know. No, it is. I feel yeah. like a lot of people didn't think y'all would make it. Well, if they went off of storyline, I would be, you know, not like too surprising. But right. they really... followed us shopping behind the scenes. You know, they, they would have known we would have made it. We what? had a Snapchat then. It oh. would have really seen like, oh, oh that shows so yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. We never even lived in any of these places that we supposedly <laughs> What uh, What makes your relationship work? Whoa. What, Spence? I, you know, <laughs> true love. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, just go to God on that. Probably the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the crystals. You know, um, <laughs> I don't know, because I was not planning on, you know, being a married type, you know, settle down young. Mm -hmm. So it just shows you when love sweeps you up, you just you take it over. I don't know. It's the spirit. It's Obviously, spirit. <laughs> I don't know. If I, I, Hummingbirds? I have no answer for that. I'm not even to pretend. I just say that's what love is. You'll know when it hits you. Yeah, Spencer didn't even want a girlfriend. I was like, yeah. Well, sure. we're going to get married, so you're right. You probably don't want a girlfriend. How long have you guys been together? We have been together for almost 17 years. Yeah. Have you ever reached a point where you ever guys wondered if we could get through this moment? Or has it always been rose-colored glasses? There's definitely one way out of this marriage. Death. It's death. And then we go Murder. after that. <laughs> there's no, there's yeah. no way Do you want to get through this in a coffin <laughs> or a cremation? <laughs> That's how Nick um, and I are too. Yeah, so yeah. there's that option. Threats. That's how we get through it. Yes, Threats. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, in all reality, I've never hit that personally. Like for me, there are definitely harder times in life and situations that happen. Like when we lost our job and the hills and things like that. And it's really, for me, at least brought us closer together. And we've always been a really good team. And the one thing I know I always have in life is Spencer. And he's the person I go to for everything. And he's the person who makes me feel better. He's the person who, you know, when I'm sick, I just want like the cuddles and the person who makes me laugh. So I think for us, or at least for me, I just finally found the the person who is a soulmate. You know, you just, it just feels different. And I felt that right when I met him, I was like, whoa, this is like, really yeah. power and, like i love him this is a whole different like, powerful thank god love. you didn't take lauren conrad's advice yeah and and you know, threats and they, <laughs> you know, the reality is they didn't yeah. show lc mm -hmm. was my biggest supporter they just never showed that that was mm -hmm. part of the story oh, really line. yeah for a while but i didn't want to say her mm -hmm. name because then people in the comment yeah. section like oh my god he's still talking about her yeah because well, well you recently uh, yesterday tweeted something about well that. on netflix you know had to go and throw that out there so, <laughs> so i had to just acknowledge a slam neutralize here. yeah i just like whoa netflix 
Netflix. True. So that's did, what you meant by that tweet, basically I'm just saying suggesting that, like, that there that was an out of context scene. Yeah, the reality is the whole storyline that we got murked out for that we played along with that nowadays I would be reading the app mentions and be like, where is the lawyers? You know, so <laughs> we just got swooped up and getting paid so much that it's like, ha ha ha. But now I didn't know 20 years later, I have Netflix still trying to make Heidi look bad when the reality was Heidi was the best friend trying to save this girl from the real case would have been her and her revenge porn ex trying to slang that to TMZ and Heidi being the hero trying to get it. And like, so it's just a little frustrating now in retrospect, sure, but yeah. I'll still take the money again and do it again. I'm not also, complaining. Yeah, there was no <laughs> okay. streaming. So it was like a one and done type yeah, of thing. Yeah, I didn't think I'll be, I thought people would have to get a DVD to ever. watch this yeah. like blockbuster. <laughs> Not like Netflix just throwing it up 44 million in a tweet. You two, more than anyone other than maybe myself, uh, seem to have what I like to think is just like a really honest and realistic perspective of like what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. And when people, when they talk about reality TV and what they signed up for, I think there's like, you know, like I guess there's two different things. Like, I don't know what you thought you signed up for, but like when you sign up for The Bachelor, for example, or like Love is Blind or all these other shows, like you can watch a show a million times and you don't know exactly what you're signing up for. Yet you know that you're signing up for a TV show where you can't control your edit. You know what might happen by signing up for it. I don't mean like, everything that's going to happen on the show but like just that like this could go any direction but your willingness to be filmed be paid or in some cases maybe you're not paid but the opportunity to get a platform and then get paid like the payoff everyone who's gone on this show or these shows reality tv we're not doing it for the love or the friendships we're we're all doing it for the payoff. And you guys have always been really honest about that and authentic about that. So much so like when the Bethany Frankel reality reckoning or the <laughs> love is blind came out, you guys had some pretty funny TikToks about your willingness to participate in any show that was willing to hire you. Where do you think that comes from? I mean, like, why do you have that approach? And I guess, what do you guys make of recently all this like lawsuits about all these alleged behaviors or these accusations from cast, uh, you know, like uh, this mistreatment. And you guys seem to have a very different approach or very take on your experience in terms of like you just said, hey, I would have still done it for the money. You guys knew that you were going down a false narrative. You knew what you were doing. I must, you guys must have assumed that it would be met with some kind of criticism, but like you just you were willing participants like so how, what do you guys make of the current state of reality tv and why don't you guys currently have a show is it by choice <laughs> sorry that's another question answer the first you one start? first <laughs> i was just like thinking about five million things it's a lot of nice you know, haircut your hair looks like you just got it i use water on it, it looks you know? really I, nice it. I use some filtered water on top oh of you it. look very handsome um no, last yesterday Heidi looked at me. She's like, "When's your hair cut?" I'm like texting the guy, like, "Bro, I need you like, now." I, didn't do it, I cut my hair this weekend. Uh, what do you think? It looks, yeah, it looks great. You guys are using the same products. Water, <laughs> the, water. The nice, yeah. Um, what was even the question? Like, I feel like just, you okay. Just, I'll yeah, start. Uh, um, for memory. me, I grew up in a really small town, so I always dreamed of being famous and successful. It was really something I wanted. And then it became became a thing when I was a teenager, like, oh, well, I don't think that's going to happen, but what's my next route? So I ended up going to fashion school and I met Lauren Conrad there and I was working in restaurants and I was working really hard and I was paying for my own college and just really feeling overwhelmed with finances and being an adult all of a sudden thrown into the real world. And my parents weren't able to help me. Like they didn't have any money to help me. So I was just kind of on my own all of a sudden. And then there was this rumor that this girl was going to be in uh, our school and she was on like an MTV show, but Laguna Beach hadn't come out yet and none of us had TVs and I definitely couldn't afford it. So right when Laguna Beach started airing, that's when I met Lauren, but she didn't say, hey, I'm on MTV. And then like a month later, so she's like, oh, I'm going to VMAs. And I was like, how? That's so cool. I want to go. And she's like, oh, I'm on that. I'm on a show. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you're that girl. Like, I thought you're going to be so stupid or whatever. But like she was <laughs> great. And uh, her and I became really good friends. And then she moved back after the semester and kept filming for Laguna Beach. And then in the summer, she's like, why don't you move down with me? Because she saw like San Francisco is not working out for me. And then she asked me to be in her pilot and I just my mom kept being like I don't think it's gonna happen I don't want you to get your hopes up and I was praying so hard and I was like please God like 
please give me this opportunity. Like, I, this is just not the life I was hoping for. So it happened and Lauren fought for me to be on it. And so I, from that moment on, I was just thinking it was such a blessing no matter what it was. So I wasn't worried about what am I looking like or whatever. I was like, I'm going on and I'm going to have fun. And this is a straight miracle. And I'm so excited. And it was before you could just get on a bunch of shows. This was lightning in a bottle, oh, as they were, say. Yeah, 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 that was so exciting. So for me, I never cared. I remember season two, Lauren's like, are you okay with how they're portraying you? I was like, are you okay? Why are you asking me that? I don't care what they're showing. Like, I'm on TV. I have new clothes and I have I'm my dinner paid for. Every tabloid magazine. Yeah, yeah I was like, like what? You're off, I, I was not a reality TV fan back then at all. I knew exactly who you guys were. Like, you guys were so famous. Like, you didn't have to be fans of the shows that you guys were on to know who you guys were. Like, that's how, it's such a different level of fame that it is now. Everything is so niche. Like even when The Bachelor has had a nice little renaissance with Joey or Love is Blind is a very popular show, but like if you don't watch, you don't know. Well, that was all Spencer, really. It was the catalyst to that. So Spencer, and he can tell you, but came on from a producing background and came in with the fame connects and more of a plan. And we weren't in the tabloids until my first surgery cover. And then it all started unfolding from there and things started getting in. But really, that was Spencer. Yeah, I remember seeing that episode of you going home to your family after getting work done and like your mom crying. And it was like, I mean, how do you feel watching that back? Do you feel like you regret showing that on national television? Or are you like, no, I'm happy. That's what I went through. I'm happy I did. That is one episode I shouldn't have filmed. They got it with the private jet. They got me a private jet. <laughs> yeah, that I was said a, no. That was it. They literally <laughs> got her private jet to fly back. And Heidi's like, oh. Yeah. Never been out of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, fine. <laughs> Book it. Yeah. Oh, so yes. I had like, yeah. that was really hard with my family. And especially I'd like talked to my mom ahead of time. And I was like, I'm not okay right now. I can barely talk. I'm not your normal daughter. So if you're going to do anything that we're going to regret, don't film the scene. She's like, no, I'm just excited to see you. And I showed up there and it ended up being a disaster. And I didn't talk to her for two years after that. So that was, uh, they that gave was her 20 really hard. grand to like murk Heidi out, like straight hush money. But she told me she wasn't no, going to do but that. Then you know, when you get so twenty thousand yeah. and you have bills to pay. Yeah, and so, so I just trusted so. my mom as my mom, and that was like one of the biggest betrayals. That was a really hard moment. But how did you, know, you guys reconcile? You know, she reached out, and it just I, I needed time, and I just really prayed about it. And then I was like, you know, life is really short, and it's not worth this. And I'm willing to forgive and move forward because I want my mom. So at that point, I was like, it's not worth not having my mom. And I want to just like move forward. So it took us years to like rebuild. And now we're really great and close. And she's an awesome grandma. But that was definitely one of the hardest moments of my life. Obviously, it must have been tough. But the way you tell your story, you, your family comes from, you know, a family that didn't have money. Mm-hmm. And then the big payoff. Oh, the restaurants and, going and, out and of And they business. watch you kind of see you, you kind of like doing whatever. So... I can almost see why mom almost thought, yeah, how bad could it be? You know, she's doing this. Yeah. But like, I'm glad you guys were able to reconcile. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I think that you only get one mom and one parent. You Not know, life is really short. Well, for well, me, I get one no, mom. I mean, I'm just saying there's people <laughs> yeah, have. Okay. You know. For me, I yeah. have one mom and yeah, that relationship. My mom was always like my closest person growing up. So I wasn't willing to sacrifice that any longer. So they they offered her twenty thousand to like I don't know how much, but it's not I like think they I, offered I her a paycheck I, to I be like I could remember. have been more. I yeah. have no idea. <laughs> it was at least twenty k to snipe yeah. Heidi out. Yeah, wow. it was, it was and they bummer. flew there like four days early. The producer is getting in her ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just like yeah. I mean, he told us Sean Travis, the producer. Literally, we had a pitch meeting years later, and he's like, "This we're at the, with the president of Lifetime. This is one of the producers of the Hills." And we're like going out for the new show after. And he's like, to be honest, I can't believe they're sitting in a room with me. I mean, for years, I was trying to steal her soul. We're looking at him like, huh? Like, uh, I can't believe we're in a room with you either. And the I believe sickness. in that stuff. Yeah. So no, like, like for like, me, that's a really serious We knew it. The Illuminati is right up in our shit. <laughs> so I'm like, like, well, you didn't get it. Yeah, and nothing's sucker. worth my soul. So go back to hell, Satan. But, uh, yeah. Are we going to see you guys on season three of Traders? Because... You guys are being pitched as a dream cast. Like every dream cast I've seen tag. includes the two of you. Well, we? I, we'd have to be the traders together. That would be the only way the producers should. Or the faithful. Make together. us. 
Not one. We, God willing, have our own show coming out. So do, do, okay, because thank you. Because yeah, like, I, I honestly yeah. that was another question. I was wondering. We're gonna do it for free if we have to. You know, like <laughs> that's our pitch to the network. We'll do this for free. You, you guys know, are very enter- you guys yeah. are very entertaining. You're you're very good at making TV. You have the chops. You guys have the mental strength it seems like and that was my question like do you guys not have a tv right now are you not on tv by choice or uh, because i'm Mm. honestly confused as someone i I would think i'm so confused i'm not even me too like it just seems so obvious for all the garbage that is out there or all the people we're following you guys are you're you're fun to watch you're excellent television thank you our mutual friend is going out with it alan oh yeah as he should as he should well that makes sense yeah it's gonna be what is it gonna be about it's a comedy. Funny. It's a darkish comedy. <laughs> is it featuring the, the yeah? It's, yeah it's, it's a docu series, but people us. don't actually know who we are, you know. So we've never done the like, you know. People think, oh, I know Heidi. She's like, no, you don't. Like behind <laughs> us has always just been a hustle. It's it been about true. money, you know. Yeah. Like we enjoy what we do. We know it's blessed to be in this industry. We know it's a fun job. We take it with a grain of salt. We have each other at the end of the day, so we know what's real and all that matters. And then also money is great. So it's, that's what we want to make. We have two kids. Yeah, <laughs> you know? We're like legal reality TV drug dealers. You know, yeah. That's how I would, you know, it's a business. Mercenaries. You know? We got to feed the addicts. The community. Yeah, we're just doing our part, but you know, they're not wow. necessarily good guys. How do you guys maintain like your mental health? It's hard. Like, you know, we do this show, mm-hmm. you know, now he's been on the show recently. Ever since now and I've been dating, there's been a lot of me just like passing on my wisdom of being like, you just, you, here's how you maintain your mm-hmm. sanity. Don't look at this. Don't look at that. But like every red carpet I've ever done, there's always like, would you ever do some other show? And blah, you know, but when it comes to being featured as a main character about my life, like it just seems like it also like, and I feel like I have a lot of boundaries and I feel like I can navigate this world pretty well and keep my sanity. It takes a lot out of you. It is hard to do what you two do so well. Like, how do you guys avoid all the fucking noise and all the criticisms and the reddits and the blogs and the comments? Like, are you just good at just staying out of it? Like, uh, or do you have fun with it? Like, how do you guys do it? Because it's much easier said than done. I think we do it differently and together. So like Spencer reads the comments and he's immersed and he's on Reddit and I... I've never been on Reddit. I don't read any, my comments are off, you know, so I don't, but he does it for us. He does like the research and more enjoys it. So we know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And then we've also done it from the beginning together. So we really were a team in it. Yeah. Like I started, people don't get how far back we go in like hate. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Comment section were created to troll Heidi and Spencer. (laughs) That's an actual fact. Websites did not have comment section like i was there the first day us weekly went live with a comment section to just roast and destroy us i was there when tmz dropped the first comment section to destroy like they created comment sections just to like murk us out so you know i'm a veteran in trolling and i actually don't leave negative comments on anybody so you would think like the amount of hate i've i've actually and that's always trips me out like I hate a lot of people, but I don't hate them enough to go comment. And that always blows my mind. So I always have this layer of like, you're so different than me that I don't care what you think about me. You're forgetting to take it all the way back to hunks and trunks. Oh yeah. Okay. I, let's go back to high school. He's, yeah, you're missing <laughs> okay. the whole I've, thing. I've been trolled to the point where, real story, my best friend, Alex, his mom took him to LA Models to, to be a model. I was in the car. We we're always together. They were like, oh, you want to do this with them? I was like, oh, I'm down to model too. And I was the, the love handles uh, model. Yes, oh. that's a real oh, wow. thing. So I was in Hunks of Trunks and this hater, Noah Sloan in the Palisades, he was upset that somebody he liked, like me, whatever. He went and cut out all these issues and taped them around the whole Palisades on Noah's Bagels, right when Noah's Bagels first popped and it was like the spot when Coffee Bean had just come out and the ice blended. He put these all around the town. So I had physical like comment section in high school in my whole town, like a, like a psychopath did, you know, so like out of a scary movie. So I started, you know, hate it at a young age yeah. where. So now has got a story like that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, started modeling at like, 14 and um one of the most popular girl in school her boyfriend liked my facebook modeling picture and so she 
went on the school computer and wrote whore sucks for free ho and like mean girls that shit printed out a bunch of them threw them around the school put it on twitter everywhere and everyone was like i'd walk down the hallway and they'd be like heard you suck for free you want to go to the bathroom and i'd be like i'm 15 leave me alone it was terrible so that's so, I'm the same way with that shit. I'm like, y'all can't hurt me. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is what I've yeah, been like, oh, <laughs> like there is no IG words. IG section. Like, like, okay. Yeah, like, got <laughs> like, me. So, it's hurtful. Yeah. Oh, it that's so sad. Of, not, that I mean, not funny that she had to experience. No, but, but it, now every every now and then, Nally will get a DM from a friend from back home. Oh, really? Yeah. And then always be like, girl, I just always knew you'd make it. And I was like, this fucking bitch <laughs> would bully me so fucking hard. And the amount of like high school bullies that have come out of Circle the woodwork back. and try to befriend Natalie try is hilarious. We know, ha ha, losers. We know who you are, yeah. fuckers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, seriously. Watch True. who you're mean to. <laughs> yeah. So Aww. yeah, the comment section. Crazy. Wow. And, and the reality is now I block, I. I go through a journey, but we had this big meeting with these operators, like the biggest guys in media. And we were asking them and they were like, just block, block anything is even neutral. Because I used to be like, oh, it's yeah. helping your engagement, like right. a troll. It's helping the mm. algorithm. They're like, no, block, block, block. Yeah. Even if it's a l- little bit negative, block. So that was really. really. I yeah. usually don't block because it's like, I'd rather not even let them know. I even know they exist. Like it's the power of. You know, but then they're like, ha ha, like Spencer Pratt blocked me. Like, I hurt his feelings so bad. I mean, I, I think blocked a lot of people. I think so that's the old like, school mentality. Yeah. I think now it's blocked because they live on your page yeah. and then that they show their like comment graffiti. on your page. Yeah. So it's like they actually really get to exist in your world mm-hmm. instead of. Not zapping to, them out of your world. Not you know? to mention, like, Daily Mail now will do a whole post of like five trolls in your comment section be like, oh, Look what they're, they're saying, saying about, about yeah, Nick. That, and that it's is like, true. It is it's tough because like, I always try uh, to, you know, I always try to find a positive and a negative. And it's just like there are a lot of. Um, we're proud of the work we've done here at the Vile Files and the size of the show has 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 gotten. And there's a there's a lot of podcasts out there, as you guys know. And there's a lot of uh, you know Bachelor fan podcast. There's just about a lot of Bachelor podcasts, and they all have one thing in common: is they they fucking hate me. Really? Oh yeah. Well, most of them have all tried to come on the show. Um, and you can always, the tide always turns when you, when you don't have them on, oh. uh, they go from fans to haters. Mm. Oh. Uh, all of these shows have one thing in common. They all talk about this show every week, you know, it's Your like, show. Oh my God. They're, their shows they're tuning in. are based yeah. off of what we talk about. Like recap The trickle shows. down like, theory. They're like your podcast. Not, not oh entirely, goodness. but I would say, Segments. you know, anywhere from. 20, 10 to 50% of their content is, you know, vile files adjacent. So it's kind of like, you know. Did you send them thanks. merch? They're about to be so mad that he just they're said so that. Mad. This no, is a no. post right yeah, now. They're, they're going to talk about this on their next episode. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, good. Give them the content. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. pumping it. Yeah. Yeah. talk about watching. us too. Yeah. 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 Another 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Wait, how are you doing? Mama, so excited. Are I'm you feeling really good? Well. Yeah, I'm doing really, really good. I, I feel have a little bit of like imposter syndrome of just like I cannot believe that I have this baby that the hospital was just like hey, <laughs> good luck you have to leave now <laughs> Get home. the nurses don't come home with you <laughs> do not did you struggle with any part of that like when you first had your baby Are I you remember like- when we first drove home and put the baby in the car I was like <laughs> you know, like I was in the car. everyone driving yeah. near the car. Yeah. It's like yeah. I, I, I've never been ten and two. I was white knuckling the steering wheel. Like, get off the road! <laughs> right. That's the scariest drive in the world, yeah. right? I went yeah. really slow, almost to the point like maybe I'm going too slow. <laughs> like I don't know, like I'm an obstruction to myself. I do have a confession. Last night, uh, babe, is that last night for the first time I got annoyed with my daughter. Ah. <gasps> Yeah. What, happened? what did she Well, do? she has been so good. I mean, really. She it, cried. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the kind of, she has been so good. Like, I mean, really just generally easy, pretty much pretty regular. We're pretty consistent. Everyone tells us like, have a nice schedule. She's been adopting to our schedule. It's been really good to the point where I've had to remind Natalie. It's just like, at some point, something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like I was a fucking sick kid and I turned out to be a pretty healthy adult. Mm. Who knows? what's going to happen. And we're like, we've been so lucky. And like last night, you know, I usually have the first shift in the middle of the night and usually a little bottle feed, some leg exercises, some burps, a little, maybe a poop if we're lucky. The whole process is 45 minutes to an hour. Last night, she was a little cranky, a little crabby. And I found myself like, it, it, we're at the, like a 90 minute mark. And I, I said to River, 
I don't know what to tell you. At least seven times. I don't know what to tell you. I don't like, and I, and I, I was like, I got annoyed. I got, an, I got annoyed with her. And I was like, you oh my God, what, I, I had a bit of a tone. I had a bit of tone. I felt so oh bad. I was gosh. like, who, who is this spoiled You're dad? <laughs> Who's just, like been so privileged with a well-behaved daughter. And I was like, oh my God, you monster. But I was like kind of getting a little sassy with her. Wow. And I felt really bad. But yeah. First of all, sleep deprivation. Yes. To get annoyed with your Sleep deprivation is hard. Kudos to you for even for waking up. I mean, that's that's great. You're doing the bottle. What's the alternative? Well, I didn't have that shift. Yeah, I was like, oh. Natalie, for one. Where was Natalie? Oh, yeah. So it's going to be like, yeah. This baby's crying. Come get it. Wake up. Right, yeah. Spencer woke up a few times with Gunner when he was little, but I really did you know, all the night stuff. And because I was nursing too and, and breastfeeding and it was just tricky, but I would suggest for you guys, if you want just to check out, it's called taking care of babies. And it seems fun to just have your baby on your schedule and this and that, but I have seen the long-term results of that schedule and it can be so hard on a, a six-year-old still. So like I would recommend just checking it out. What is it? It's about sleep schedule. And it's sleep hygiene. It's a, website, it's a website too. And she has courses and has changed my life with the second one. We have no ah, this isn't like a financial. Yeah, no, no, no. No, I'm like, you're paid for <laughs> yeah. it. Like, it's Unfortunately, like, if taking you want care to. of babies, <laughs> use code Heidi. No, There's no, no code. You know, There's no code. They no might code. not answer if you tell them <laughs> I refer paid, to you. <laughs> you know, this is not promo. <laughs> but yeah, that would that would help. But that is <laughs> that's right. normal. And it's late. And how old is she now? A month. A month. Yeah. A month. Okay. So at four months, she'll sleep through the night if you get her on this schedule. So it's just short. But those nights can turn into your life, your life for a long time. If you don't like get it under sleep hygiene quickly. Yeah. I got a little sassy yeah. with her. I felt bad. Yeah. It's okay. Like, is she in a bassinet? Yeah. Okay. You also got to give yourself grace. It's new. It's stressful. It's exhausting. It's a lot. It's the most yeah. responsibility ever. So don't be so hard on yourself too, because it's like you're up at whatever time doing the Lord's work. So it's all good. You know? What's it's your insane. favorite thing about one another as parents? Heidi, you go first. I love Spencer's the, like, fuck, fuck. What the fuck do you say? I love the, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love the playfulness. We, this is called going deeper, Spencer. Right. Okay. Uh, we go deep. Oh God, I on. love the attentiveness that Spencer gives. He's really fun and playful with the boys. They love wrestling with him and playing with him. And then he also is really good at helping them be them in a situation too. And like helping build their confidence. And he s suggests things that I wouldn't, that I'm like, that was exactly right on. And so the opposite of what I was thinking. So he really takes time to like slow down, help them out and think like, long term with them so but the playfulness is so fun when they're all like jumping on him and hugging him and he's such a sweet dad what was the question Aww. what's your what favorite you thing about, about heidi as a mother, oh, uh, as a as mother. As a mother. As a mother. Oh. not as a lover as a mother, as a mother. <laughs> um uh you wow. know i, mean, I don't know there's thrilled. so many things just, let me google it yeah, for yeah, you google, what google. Google. sorry <laughs> sorry uh i mean her whole life is you know being a mom so i don't know it's that's a tricky question. Like her, she's given up her existence to be a mom. So I would say the most impressive part is that sacrifice of, you know, and I see now that we are involved in schools with other, not shading other moms that are listening, but there's different styles of moms. I'm not saying that mom's right or that's one, but Heidi's one that's like, my life is being a mom, which is not, you know, sometimes we work on balance and we're mm -hmm. trying to, you know, well, let's have pop star Heidi be part of your life too, you know. <laughs> your kids never question right. their mom's um, priorities. Oh, my. Yeah. It's like, Which, you yeah. know, unfortunately, other kids might yeah, have to question they their wouldn't. parents' priorities. So right, I right. think that, that she, I knew she'd be a great mom and, you know, she wanted to be a mom so bad, but I didn't think it was like, yeah, I don't know. How old are your kids? I don't know the answer to your question. Six and one and a half. Mm -hmm. Six and one and a half. Yeah. And we bought a birth control test or what's it called? A pregnancy, pregnancy test, test today. A birth control test. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah, pregnant. She's not I've pregnant. I've taken three. To all the snap are we, people messaging me. Are you me. open to more? No. 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 no, no we're no, good. No, no. Two You're is so like. Two is great. Unless you want to have nannies and housekeepers, which currently are budgets. When you know, Riker was a baby, I was like, maybe I'd want one more. And I am not sure. And then 
the past year, I've been like, no, this two is so perfect. And for them, it's perfect, too, to have that dynamic. When you get three, one kid's left out. A lot of the That's time, too. That's his own defense. Yeah. yeah, it changes yeah. The whole to anybody zone, that has yeah. it, we're not shading you. Okay. No, but for me, like, Gunner's very <laughs> sensitive, too. Okay, Gunner's very sensitive. And so I think his feelings would get hurt if Riker, like, wanted... You know, and some kids are tough and also more individuals, you know, so he's just for us and our family yeah, too we're, is we're great. Perfect. We always have to disclaim right. our everything. Yeah, this is everything. just our yeah. preferences. Yeah, yeah. We don't know By what we're talking about. Whatever you want, yeah, yeah, we don't yeah, care yeah. what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Did, telling you what's right or wrong. Yeah. Was there a party it. that wanted to be a girl dad or were you like, no, I'm comfortable with boys. I know boys. <laughs> I want boys. You know, I didn't really... Like being a dad, I love being a dad, but I was like, it could have gone either way. If Heidi, if we had ended up in Costa Rica, which was the plan, what? you know, living in the jungle. <laughs> I had that one. plan. We took a jet there, we, we there a one way jet, jet. We, yeah, MTV. One did. way, we did. spent all our money. We ran out. Four Seasons Room Service in the jungles. Yep. Very expensive. <laughs> So it could have made, made memories though. It, oh is my that God. how Gunner was created? Oh, no, 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 that no, was no. like Gunner ten years like, later. Yeah. Oh, okay, like seven no, years no. later. That was so. Gunner's a no, London child. No, I'm cool on being a girl dad. I, I don't know, woman in the house. Don't know, you know, <laughs> feminine energy there. You know, we're, we're good. We're tapped out. Yeah, I'm, I'm very in. feminine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just enough. exuding. Got purses just... everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's no. your stuff well, that's, that's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. No. no, my stuff is in places. Your stuff is everywhere. That's... You're messy, Spencer? No, we just don't have a he's huge untidy. house. If no, we had a mansion, she oh, wouldn't notice. He cannot put something back. Right. Like a bottle, I can't a put dish in back. the dishwasher. Yeah, no. It's like a, a thing. Nothing. I don't even try. No. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't the try. Moment I don't I do it for any, content. The oh, moment, sure. the moment I had any kind of money, I stopped putting things away. Well, if you have someone to do it for you, that's fine. But I'm... I'm the one I'm to the do one. it for him. Yeah, well, okay. Well, we're the, That's by choice. We're the, we had someone who did that. Okay. And then I was like, I would like to be alone in the house now. Yes. And I said, fine, yes. but I'm not changing this behavior. I have become accustomed to not folding. Successful and I'm yeah. not. This is like, money does not buy you happiness unless it comes to like not have to worry about parking tickets or like no longer having to fold your laundry or like worrying about you know, like I have some bad habits I will never overcome, you know, and I know what they are at this point in my life. And having just a little bit of, a, you know, extra cash has allowed me not to have those shortcomings I have as a person get in the way of making my life worse. Because that's what it used to be like when I couldn't afford it. Like my thoughtlessness, my aloofness, my forgetfulness, my leaving shit open, like had a cost and it would make my day worse sometimes. And now it's like someone else can do that for me. Well, we say we work really hard for nannies, and, you yeah. know, to be able to like afford someone to help with the kids sometimes mm -hmm. or like, yeah, these things cost money. To be honest, kids. I wouldn't have spent so many millions if I had known we'd have had kids just because I would have saved more housekeeper money. I would have. How much money do you think you've spent? Oh, I know. Because the <laughs> other day at, um, I mean, not the number, but I, I, the other day I went through storage and I found like we did at one time have like the top business accountants that everything was detailed as we'd be in jail, you know, for sure. Right. Off of like pay your taxes. taxes. We always yeah. pay taxes. So yeah. thankfully yeah. we did have the big dog, yeah. Provident. But, uh, so they have just file cabinets of the whole storage, you know, everything. And I was just going through, I was like, I need to make a documentary of just going through these and showing people how much money we spent. It's the most insane it looks like Johnny Depp. <laughs> like it's what like, are we talking? No, I mean millions. millions. Who knows? Like, are we millions? Is it on, yeah, like, like over on, like, ten million dollars? On just clothes, on food, uh, wine, wine clothes, I'm a pop star. dog. Like, no. Y'all are celebrities. Yeah, like two million dollars yeah. on a, a pop you know? album. There wasn't a lot of like four hundred one k. There was no. There was no. <laughs> there was no not. There was not a single <laughs> investment. Yeah, there no, was, there's like, crystals. Crystals. Some of them went up in value. Tell me about crystals. Well, I mean, at that time we were buying everything. So it wasn't so strategic like, oh, I'm going to spend all this money on Christmas. I was spending it on on everything. It was just that Birkins, was- Birkins, yeah, crystals, flowers. Birkins. We used to have flowers get delivered like we were Chris Jenner, like arrangements like in the house. Like a thousand dollar flowers they would die, weekly. You know, like- <laughs> you, li you lived as if. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we were fake it till you make it. We we're supposed to be Kim and Kanye, but yeah. things went sideways. Your crystals was in an episode, wasn't it? That started. I still think about some of those I gave yeah. away. I like them back. That one at Ocean Jasper that I gave <laughs> yeah, Kristen Cavallari. 
I would like that back. Do you think she still you would, has do it? Do you think she still has it? That was about twenty thousand dollars. Oh and my! I want it back. <laughs> she and said she does in her Hollywood. Well, we're gonna get pad. it. Back. Do you, well, she has the uh, the Montana boys. She's she doing just. I I I actually I hate it when people. Uh, she's doing great. Talk oh, about yeah, my yeah, money yeah. as if you know. They but, know, but she seems to be doing fine. Oh, she's, listen, Uncommon James just opened up in Charleston, so yeah, yeah okay. I've been to her store in Chicago. It's thriving. I think she's I, been yeah, fine I, for a I, long time. I don't time. think it was ever not fine. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah. think so, like, she was gonna she, be fine no matter what. So right? she'll give it back. But she can give yeah, it back. Yeah, I, mean, I will definitely get it back. You should ask. I'm gonna again. Sounds like I'm you gonna. would get more meaning <laughs> from it than she might. I literally remember every detail of that. Why are crystals so important? Well, at the time they were, I was they're magical and, you know, I was connecting to other dimensions, but I've toned it down, you know? So, because I realize you have to live here in the real world. You can't go magical. Otherwise you end up in white wall <laughs> rooms. You know? right. So, but right. for real, we had some wild experiences around, you know, tapping into the multiverse. So, or our healer was spraying <laughs> freaking drugs, drugs in our face, <laughs> yeah. which could have been happening. Because I like, he would be like, do the sit. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in the pyramid. Like, you know, like, and I'm like, what was in those essential oils? So that could have been happening also. But so, yeah, yeah, we just, we ended up with a lot of them. And then I kept wanting to buy them. And then Heidi was like, you got to start selling your crystals if you want to yeah. buy more. And that's it. how we became Do you guys a have more purses business. or crystals at home? Crystals. crystals. We have thousands of crystals. Have mm-hmm. we sold the Birkin or are we holding on to that? Oh, well, no. Birkins are at the, in the, the vault at the bank. That's, that's <laughs> an investment. Definitely Save them for, for my sure. yeah. son. Uh, someone tried. Yeah. Who was it? Was it you to tell me this? That you can. It's you can't buy a Birkin. A Birkin doesn't. Yeah, you can't buy it. You have to know someone or have like a relationship with Hermes, right? Mm-hmm. We were very mm-hmm. close with Hermes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I wanted to buy yeah. Nalia Birkin, I couldn't even do that. You You'd could have buy to like you could buy in. Black Market Birkin. You know, There's, you'd have to go in, have to spend an X amount of money to like get on their list, probably, and, and then, then you year. have to, and then you have to wait until they get whatever color, whenever, if they let you. And one. then everybody, all their clients that they've like texted have had to have passed. But we could put you in touch with our guy, probably, if you really wanted to buy one. I don't yeah. want one. Is this a thing? No, I don't want one. Okay. Are you just well, saying if that? Well, if it truly well, is. an investment. If it truly is an investment. They've yeah. only increased. All my Birkins have, have increased $2,000 in price. You got to keep the boxes. Did you not keep the boxes? Keep can you use it? Yeah. Can you wear it? Yeah. Can you take it to a red carpet? Yeah, ever? yeah. Yeah. If you want your arm If it could appreciate like, in value, how much does a Birkin cost? Oh. Which one you want? They're all different I, prices. I, I know very little. Since it's like, I got one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> cash or <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, no, they're great. There's, I mean, some of them are, are six figures. Well, now, no, I don't so, have any of those. Yeah, we're not. So, I don't have any of those. We don't have like the snakes. I think they start ones. at 13 or 14 now. Wow. Thousand. It's just insane. But It makes you know. me nauseous. Nick bought me a $8,000 Louis Vuitton bag for my push present and I Way. was like this makes me nauseous I was like we gotta return this I don't know like, does it baby nauseous. go in here that's great it was a test it, it was a test, it was a test. Oh. and I was oh. like no, I was no, being frugal and I was like let's return this and get just like a little like, um, cosmetic case well, it's yeah. tricky, right? Oh, you because really did. That was wow. an experience, though, take, taking it back. Yeah, oh. that's a whole Therapist. thing. That was... Yeah. It's almost like a shame. They, they, <laughs> yeah. Pretty like they woman, shame you so hard. hard. I, yeah. yeah, they do. They try. Oh. I didn't give a fuck. I Because yeah. I bought it in New York. I had... I, I did a... a I, had a, I got, had a gig. A nice little paying gig. And then, you know, I was feeling generous. Yeah. Here she is, nine months pregnant with my child. It's like the least I could do. She's... Mm. And so I bought this bag. And, uh, and then Nellie, being who she is, the... <clears throat> very frugal queen frugal yes frugal. um we frugal. took it back and we're in the louis vuitton store and i'm like yeah we just want to you know return this and they were just like well you know we have a whole baby section upstairs and we have this and we have that but like and then she ended up getting this like makeup kit for like you know it was very expensive because it was louis vuitton but much louis much vuitton <laughs> would you have returned jewelry if it was like a tiffany's ring or bracelet you know nick hasn't Yet dabbled into the jewelry um, realm, which I'm kind of waiting on. Would you have on. kept it? I, probably. Oh, We've learned you just with got jewelry, the wrong gift. Jewelry is... Again, jewelry, did I though? You did have I to though? get, if it's an investment, it has to be Cartier yeah. or Tiffany. Those yeah. brands like hold the value. Yeah. You can't or just else go, they just like, yeah. we, are like a car. We did that wrong. You can't go to like the top jewelry store and get all like ice out, blah, blah, blah. Like it holds, it's just, no. that's true. Well, that's good to know. But we're at Louis Vuitton and we returned it and then. 
you know how that you can the the screen you can see you know it It'll, shows you your like total or, or what your you're getting balance back or your return or whatever, you know? it was like we were gonna get like i don't know seven thousand dollars back and i was like so you're gonna get um i was like seven thousand dollars he's like yeah i guess he like pulls out a calculator uh, he like makes sure yeah, he yeah, yeah. Got her, yeah he's like are you sure you don't want to check out the baby section upstairs <laughs> i'm like my baby does not need to leave the time yeah, they, yeah. they tried yeah. to shame us uh yeah, and since i have none um i had no problem returning it yeah good you know, good yeah. don't ever yeah. let those Anytime people make you feel any type of way us we just go Where's the champagne? Yeah, literally. That's the trick. <laughs> right you just when they got out the they go, you go, are you going to bring out the champagne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which they've really tightened up yeah, on. Yeah, they've really? got like, We used to go to Gucci and they would, they'd see yeah. us walk in the door, they'd the pop bottle, the champagne, pop, pop. you know, and it's a good, you should always have people drink in stores if they're yes. not uh-huh. sober because it, you know, shop. makes people shop more. Would you guys like a drink? I feel rude not having a No, no, no they offer, uh, you know what, no, it's, we got to get kids after. We're trying to drinking before two o'clock. Okay, yeah. okay, that yeah. makes sense. But uh, only if it was biodynamic um, gotcha, gotcha. champagne, gotcha. I would totally if be it. Uh, is it Chloe, the rosé? <laughs> <or Chloe, laughs> Heidi, you yeah. have been posting the going out and calling paparazzi on yourself and filming what that has been like. What made you want to open up that door to what the inside of fame? Show people what that's like. We've always been really transparent about calling paparazzi and being in on it, setups. I mean, that's really what we're known for. So I just am a very transparent person. I always have been. That's one of the things, like you're saying, being authentic. It's like, well, here's just the truth and whatever it is. So I really was doing that. And I was like, these are great TikToks. And the funny one was when the paparazzi actually didn't show up and they're like, oh, "Oh, you waited too long. And then he left and I'm calling the agent. I'm like, where is this paparazzi? He's like, oh, you took too long. I'm like, took too long. Now, like 15 minutes is too long to come out. These guys are like, they're like an Uber driver. He's just like, you know, sorry, I got a place to fucking go. You know, one star. Whatever. Yeah, made it for a good TikTok. Now there's only like four like professional paps in LA. There used to be 4,000. There's only four. Like four, like with per the agent. A- agency. Like right. so, we work with Mega, so they only have like four, like re- mm-hmm. salaried, you know, photographers. They wouldn't. Even, they would call themselves celebrity photographers. Celebrity actually. photographers, and that's and the difference between them and just like Joe someone Schmo showing up with a camera, like a, a, like a straight murderer. Who knows? <laughs> you know, just, there's no like just because somebody has a camera and they're like, hey, look over here. I wouldn't necessarily smile for that reason. Oh, so shit. early two thousands, there were a lot of people who could just have a camera, you know, like a yeah. big camera, and then sell it. So it was this whole fight for getting the photos. It was the heyday of fame, and so if they got these photos, everyone could sell it. But then it, when magazines stopped selling and Instagram started popping, and everyone started posting things, they took away all these jobs from people who were trying to hustle on the streets and. You know, people can say whatever they want with paparazzi, but a lot of them are family men and they're people. And it's like, just because this person's on the street taking your photo, you don't know them and what they're going through and what they're hustling for. So whenever there was this negative feeling about paparazzi, it's like, yeah, maybe some of them overstep the boundaries, but a lot of them are really hardworking men and women out here who are trying to make a living. So those jobs have gone. And now there's only a few people who do most of them team up with celebrities and are very well known and great photographers a lot of them are fashion photographers or other so photographers. they're not the ones hanging outside of craze no 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 we're talking no. we, we never went on one vacation without bringing a paparazzi with us like travel like really cabo and they'd wherever. meet us they, yeah they you guys are own, next level they had their own yeah. room. <laughs> TV stars. But, i mean we were making for real because i just was looking through this the other day millions of dollars selling photos of ourselves so that's really? why people were like look how stupid they are like no look how stupid you were wow that's you true. know like and that that was the other hardest thing that it was the biggest, like, oh my God, we always expected to be able to do that because we did it so consistently and getting those checks for months. And, and like, then that overnight. game was gone. We're like, oh my God. And Instagram did it feel popped like overnight? up. It was overnight. Yeah. It was yeah, pretty it was quick. Just like, Once God. everyone, Reese Witherspoon's posting this yeah. selfie on it, Instagram, we're like, oh my gosh. And then magazines are printing those photos. Those they aren't even high quality photos. So yeah. it used to be such a standard to get in the magazines, you'd have to have a certain color that popped lighting. on Couldn't lighting. Couldn't have stripes. Like, it was no joke. It was a whole thing. It had to be within <laughs> something relevant or a holiday and everything was strategic. All the celebrities, whether they would say it or not, were also trying to get their movies in there, whatever premieres. So it was really an A-list accolade. And if you were in any of those pages, it elevated you so, so much. So. You never really had any bad experience. I mean, y'all were in the early 2000 heyday of paparazzi so like you didn't have any negative 
I like, mean, this is where it started. I actually, man. my first thing uh, was to shout out the Star Magazine. I was in the center of the Yucco Meter, and I cut it out and I put it on the wall. The Yucco Meter. So if you start at the Yucco Meter. <laughs> was there anyone else with you on the Yucco Meter? I mean, I, irrelevant <laughs> to me. I was in the center of the Yucco Meter, so... He was like, and he was excited. Uh, you know, he I got like, cut yes. out and put on the wall. As you so should. Right. Once you anything past the Yucco meter, you're, <laughs> it's you're all winning. up from there. <laughs> so it, we had so much fun. Like people don't yeah. get, we were living like you can't even comprehend. And we had each other, so, so it was just so fun to like fly places and do things and. You know, we would be doing all that anyways. Like a couple. Just, it is fascinating talking to you guys about this stuff because you have incredible perspective about your experience. You guys wouldn't be here doing what you're doing, all the crazy things you've done without incredible perspective or seeing the big picture, you know, the yucko meter, just to be able to look at it that, like a lot of people just don't have. Especially, I think, after having such a bad portrayal on TV and like y'all still just being like, it's fine, but the thing about it, there's only like three experiences in person where we're the most hated people on TV or whatever. When you see people in public, they, they everyone wanted a photo. Oh my god, I love you. Yeah. Like once it's all uh, in the on the websites or in the books, but like only one person maybe flicked me off out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it wasn't. In LA, when you go to other states too, oh, it's not like yeah, that. Yeah, like we go to yeah. Vegas and we were like Michael Jackson level favorites. Like, who cares uh, yeah, what is my airing first yeah. season on of the Bachelor? Show. I was very hated online, and I'd walk into a bar in Chicago, and that's how I would I I would tell people it was like being Michael Jackson. Like I would f I could feel the bar turn and look at me, and the whole it would, which is a crazy thing, right? And yeah, and everyone's nice. You know, yeah. everyone wants to take a picture. Right. Like you're, you're the it person, which is a what like, and so I was like, yeah, I don't really care. Like that was, it's a, it really is wild. The that. only thing I wish we didn't waste money on, but you never know in retrospect, was the amount of money we were actually paying in security, and we should have built the network. Now looking back, like that should have been in our contract. Like you're making us this hated, where it feels like we need security that we're paying. So like when I was looking through those, I was like, dang, like that was a How lot. How much did you spend on oh, security? Okay. God, like, I mean, I don't even ballpark. Ask. Wow, hundreds of thousands. But a also, year? if we didn't have yeah, just, our own security at the end of the hills, I had to have them with me. And then something happened with a producer, and they all witnessed it, so it became a legal thing. So thankfully, we did have our own security, or else we wouldn't have got paid for that last. Season, yeah, I so think. there's well, that's a balance, but we should have. That's of all the things, I'm like, uh, I should have just had like, no. What? Yes, I, mean, we're so, I am you know, security. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I protect her; she protects yeah. me. Yeah. But yeah, we're that's, very safe. We out conscious. here in these streets. LA. Yeah, you don't want to mess. We're good. Pull yeah, up, yeah. Daria, yeah. double dog, Daria. Yeah. Um, what made y'all want to, I guess, start telling the truth about the hills and how you know, like, at what point did you feel? comfortable and because i feel like a lot of people are scared on reality shows to be like no they made me do that or they like when did you feel like you once were... we figured out the ndas weren't real and it's like you're gonna oh. go sue me to tell the truth you're gonna sue me for five million dollars to tell the truth like they scared like initially mm -hmm. they were scary like yeah. oh my god you t you're talking about that there was also no platforms i would have been on ig live tiktok live we Madeline, didn't have any way to even it. talk so. <laughs> once we heard from our big lawyer at a huge firm that there's no such thing really as an nda in reality tv because you have to be able to tell your truth publicly so when it becomes the truth and what really happens in your life if it's really your life no one can legally tell you not to do something like your experience however he worded it yeah, yeah. so he once we like heard that yeah and he knew what he was talking he about. Like, there, there like, have been people <laughs> who have lost i know i know the bachelor sued someone and lost and won I, don't know. I wasn't part of the case. I, I, don't... I mean, maybe they knew we were like we would have been excited to go to court. You know, like I was like, <laughs> I know. like you know, like oh, yeah, for the most, I think for the most, I think for the most part, it has been a me scare to have a Johnny sure, but... Yeah, I wonder. It's also a fine line for the network, right? I so... think. It... Well, you also don't want to be known as something like once you start suing your talent, right? Who wants to go? Yeah, on. and we also don't want to be, and we've never tried to be network bashers either, like. We're always like, we were in on, you know, like we also take accountability yeah. within there and we're not yeah. just like blaming producers and saying like, this happened, they ruined our lives. It's like, well, that's not what we're saying. I've we're never saying, got that sense from you yeah. guys. And I really respect how you guys approach it because that's the approach I have tried to take. I feel like no one on in Bachelor world has more to complain about 
than I do. Right. And I'm sure that's relative. Other people might disagree. Corinne, but... we just had her. She'd probably <laughs> say she does. Uh, <laughs> she, yeah, well, I'm familiar with Corinne. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Right. We, we, oh uh, I don't even know backstory, but we just had on the podcast. No, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. She's, she's on a like, season. But yeah, there, there have been people like Corinne and really? myself who have, who have taken it on the chin. But even to that end, just like, yeah, every once in a while, I'll share a, a truth, but it's always like, I own my part. And I always feel like you guys would set the record straight here, but it was never, even to the point where you guys are like, yeah, we knew, you know, we accepted it, right. you know, uh, we're nowadays, and I would love to get, you know, a transition to what you guys think about the state of reality TV now and Bravo World and Scandaval. Nowadays, it's just like, there's no accountability. It's just like people sign up for these shows and act like they've been kidnapped and all these crazy accusations, like the, you know, or they just like, like it's like they expected to be treated like stars, and if they, it just it reeks of like entitlement right. and no accountability. Where it's just like you know they they chose to drink, and then somehow it's the networks who made them do it. And it's like I've never been on a reality TV show where someone forced me to drink alcohol. It was available. It was right. offered. Right. Uh, they didn't parent me. Right. You know, they weren't. You know, they didn't tell me I shouldn't drink, or you know, they it. They, they were they created an atmosphere and i'm curious like how do you guys what do you guys make of the bethany reality tv reckoning yeah let's start there it's hard because i feel like we always came at it as professionals so i just look at these people as amateurs there's it's like professional sports this is the jv you're watching versus people that are professionals so if you want to be a professional entertainer which is what we were trying to do and be millionaires you operate a different way than Wah, 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 crybaby, like, I don't know what you thought type people. So that's, I barely watch reality. I, I like Southern Charm because they're all just having a good time. And I never hear them complaining about anything. Are you team Olivia or team Taylor? You know, I don't actually take tea. I just, I'm like, what are they drinking? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that uh, in depth on it. You know, and they're all hooking up. It's, it seems fun. I'm but, team Madison. You know, but, <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, I just, I think a lot of people, if you have, you know, they shouldn't be on a reality show. Like, we know how special it is to be filmed and not filming yourself. Like, so once you get, that's why when the Hills reboot came back, we were like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And yelling at all the cast, it was like just phoning it in and doing that poor me, wah, 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 complaining. Like, this, we should be filmed, entitlement, image craft, BS. We're like, you guys, we're going to get canceled. Yeah, I think that's the difference what Spencer always references too, that when we were on the hills, we were treated differently than the rest of the cast. So they were all getting this red carpet layout. The producers love us. And the producers to us were like, oh, we're filming with you. You know, like that type of energy. And we're like, whatever, you're here. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Here's my paycheck. I don't care what you say, what you do. Like we're working. So yeah, for us, we treated it like a job, not this like glamorous lifestyle so it is true when you're going on a show we've done big brother we've done marriage boot camp we've done a bunch of shows work. you go in and you work you do the work anything that's a perk is nice ask for as much as you can if you don't get it whatever i always got the most alcohol yeah, like, <laughs> so i'm like free alcohol yeah, okay great we're literally you know? built to the point like when we've gone a hills trip we get we'd, cut off we'd be like what's our budget in the lobby store and yeah. I'd be getting all the shampoos <laughs> that I wouldn't even need, you know, and like the lotions. I'll never forget in Utah. Like I just got like a bag of like lotions or like, yeah, you can buy anything in the like gift shop. Like, you know, so like when you come at this, it's like silly you too know, and appreciative, right? You know, and like if they said how, no, I'd be like, whatever. It's like a game. How can we get the most out of it? I mean at the premiere parties, everyone would be at these lavish parties and they put Heidi and I in our own room. Like in the and closet. Like bring us like like a little tray of food and be like, you'll be out for a photo. Or in they, five put, minutes. they put us with all the extras, like all the people there. So we'd be with like all these strangers in there and they're all in this VIP room. And we'd be like, whatever, we're we're here. And none of us them wanted us here. So it's always been a game and a, like an appreciation of being where you are and not losing track of reality. It's like, I'm not working night and day doing whatever you know a it's job. like i just came like, this from is not, this is right fun. <laughs> it's all good like, so much respect for like you. a yeah. real yeah. job like yeah. that's why people are always like why do you still want to be famous I'm like 
because uh, they pay you to literally do nothing. It's the great, you know, like, it's, you know hello. It's the, Play games. Yeah, you this to go is there not real life. Pretend and, to be a traitor. Yeah, like, you know, this like, is insane. Oh my gosh. No, but that is true. It's it's very easy to lose touch with reality. I mean, I remember having having conversations with friends. I've been, into, you know, like you get a certain social media campaign. They offer you a certain amount of money, which is often great and then you're like i can't believe i have to film this and blah 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 and you're like wait time out they're paying you fucking five figures or six figures and like just shut the fuck up and do this and stop acting like and i say this to myself sometimes but it's it's so easy to lose fucking perspective or touch with reality in this fucking space that we've operated because it is so like dripping with privilege and like delusion and it's it is not reality it is not real work and yeah, it's it's those, incredible. Those ads can be stressful. Okay? Yeah, like, no, they, no, they, they have a lot of requirements yeah. lately. <laughs> they can be, they have, you know, they have a lot of do's and don'ts. Like, okay? Would you <laughs> trade it for your <laughs> former job no, no, at like no, your no, grocery no, store? But just or? So it should come clear. with an assistant to <laughs> yeah. figure out how to get it up there. Well, they're paying you. Yeah. You can hire one. Right. Yeah. It can be um, hard. No, don't get me wrong. Yeah. They're annoying and frustrating. I've lost all touch of reality while doing it, but I have to remind myself. Totally. What the alternative? Absolutely. One time Absolutely. I remember like they wanted me to like obviously just do something that was going to look so bad on the hills. And I was and I had a moment where I called my dad and I was like, they want me to do like this. I just want to make sure, you know, just checking in with the real world here. <laughs> and my dad was, was a dentist. He's like, I go to work on Saturday for $80 teeth cleaning. He's like, how much do they pay? I'm like, I think like it's like 125000 for this episode. He's like. And I just didn't hear anything on the other line, you know, like, yeah, okay, you know, like, okay, got it. like, so those are those moments. If I ever had it, I would just call like somebody who goes to work every morning at seven to seven and like goes in people's mouths. Uh, I, I once did a campaign for preparation H and to even do that, they, they were very generous. And then I was just like busy. I had a busy day. And my, one of my agents was, who was running the campaign was asking me like getting approvals for certain things they want to. And I foolishly for that particular campaign was like, honestly, man, like whatever they, I don't care. Just whatever day of where I'm supposed to post, everything's been approved. This is a big corporate. So there's, it's, it's not like some like small mom and pop who decided to give you like a lot of money and they're like, cool to work with. This is like everything that is being put online has gone through several lawyers. And I'm about to post, and I had to post on my Instagram story the question and a poll, what your butt care routine is. And I remember just losing my fucking shit. Be like, I have to post and ask my audience what their butt care routine is. And they're like, yeah, well, you just, you said anything. Do whatever. Do whatever. Oh I've never said that gosh. again. Yeah. I, I'm what over is here. preparation I'm over age? like, hey, uh, I'm right. Oh, yeah. an itchy oh. butthole. Uh, you know, oh, well, I would yeah. assume that'd probably be the... The question. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like, Something like with the that, that connects with that brand. Yeah, it does oh, make like, sense. It, it's true. Oh my gosh! It just like I don't, oh I don't care. Gosh. And why am I asking them? Oh yeah. my gosh! Just, I'm available for that ad. I yeah, cost yeah. a lot you'll, less than him. You'll ask I'll do whatever. that poll on TikTok also. <laughs> I'll battle uh, with yeah. that poll. Uh, I will battle <laughs> withholding it. Oh um, so, what <laughs> advice, if any, do you have for? Rachel slash Raquel Levis in general. Mm. Oh, she already burned the house down. I, I was trying to connect to her to like save her. Same. Yeah, I was like, she had the chance because, you know, we're best friends. He wouldn't say that back. But Alex Baskin, the producer of Vanderbump, is my best friend. He doesn't text me back but oh. or pick up the phone. Oh, no. But um, we're besties. And I was trying to tell him, like, get me in touch with her. But when this was all going down, because I knew there was two ways it's going to go. You can become a millionaire TV star or a podcaster with no millions. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and she went the wrong door because it was such a no brainer. You go on the show, you bring in a couple of ring, like I'll go cast my new friends because they're going to, they're, they need you to film with anybody. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that you're out the click. You can open your, like, whatever you want. They were going to. And they love a redemption yeah, story. Even if they don't <laughs> put your, you're going to look way better with that lighting and the beautiful cameras, then you're going to look on your iPhone with Bethany. 
Um, so yeah, it's so sad. And now it's she's suing Ariana. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good look to sue the, Not a good luck. sue the, sue the girl that you cheated on. <laughs> yeah. Cause her emotional distress yeah. and pain and uh, then sue her for it. Yeah. That, that was, uh, that it was seems like, like a bad woo. move. And if you're going to do that, at least do that on the show. That would have been a great storyline. I would have backed that if you're filming that on Vanderpump, like, oh, I'm suing them. And you're telling Sheena that on the show. Now, now we got some scenes, but yeah. not now, just now. It seems like she's taking all uh, the worst advice from all the wrong people. It's actually that's it's tragic. It's just, who would have thought she just needed Nick Vile and Spencer Pratt's advice uh, to make her know, life? <laughs> you guys should have your own show. Where should you we have put together a consulting? Yeah. Right? Honestly, yeah. it should be. Honestly, the problem is people don't listen. I, that is true. That I've is, had a lot of conversations with a lot of Bachelor alumni, and it's like, hey, Nick, uh, you're doing really well, man. I'd love some of your advice. I'll spend 90 minutes on the phone with them. I, and they don't take any of my we'll advice. see. If it was on camera, they probably would. It's you're true. missing the piece there. That is true. Because, but then they don't, you know, there's no follow through. Well, like, Nick and Spencer's you know, reality TV crisis hotline. What I just can't believe yeah. is that Tom hasn't gone to Sweden and got like the new Max Martin and got a hit song. Like he had that moment. Like right after when, as he said, he was as big as um, yeah. that situation, yeah. you know, during that time, yeah. he, if he'd come with one of those Max Martin hits, he should have spent all his money to have the like, like I'm the worst. <laughs> like that's just the hook, you know, like, and just with a smash beat and had a one hit wonder. I'm just like, bro, how are you going to just write your own music still? We, we tried to write a Tom Sandoval song from our episode. You probably didn't hear it. I uh, know, Actually, uh, Justin. Uh, created it. Oh uh, well, it's with someone else, but yeah. Uh, I'm sure the, it's. You want to hear it a little bit? I have n nowhere to go. Uh, <laughs> I'm least, stuck uh, on this couch. <laughs> here for a long. I don't have you any nanny text. You don't want to hear it? No, I do. I mean, I'm just really proud of Justin. Oh, let's, it let's, was a, a really good beat. Um, no, I, no. I said Max Martin, but Justin. Justin Max Martin. To, I'm the runner up. Yeah. <laughs> Should we call Tom one last time? I think we should. This is real phone number. Hey, hey. This is a clips from the episode. Tom, we're live right now. Live. Oh, sh I can say whatever the f I want. <laughs> oh, God. What do you want me to say, Nick? What have I learned? What have I learned? What? To not ever, like, cheat that way. Like, great. Right. What do you mean cheat that way? <laughs> Could've, you got notes? Yeah, I, like mean, you got notes. I mean, listen, it's, we, it's like solid for like we were, TikTok, we but weren't trying Ryan to be an overnight sensation. Yeah, we weren't trying to be an overnight you know? sensation. Yeah, 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 we understand. Yeah. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Kiss FM. Like, he needed a Kiss FM song. Ryan Seacrest, you know, Kiss FM. Where Ryan breaks it. He could have done that. That was that was my idea for him. The other girl, woman, she did great. She had the Glad trash bags. She had Dancing with the Stars. Chicago. Glamour cover. She she printed out. She has a Vial Files podcast. Yeah, nailed it. Right, episode. V all. V all. V all. V all. Yeah. That's great. V, Nick, Nick, v, Nick, v, Nick, 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 so yeah, Nick, Nick, but they're winning. I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and try to talk on Vanderpump. They're all anybody still on that show. Just congratulations. Yeah, but Ra Ra Rachel opted out, unfortunately, and she's not coming back. You know, because I keep on being like, can't you get her? I mean, she also should have definitely popped on special forces with you you know that i like, was uh told that they tried to get them both oh, rachel yeah. and and tom together and she declined that. that's what i mean like these are those things like you're already so deep in a hole like what are you gonna worst case you dig a little bit deeper or maybe you dig a little bit up you know like you're already but instead she went bethany and then iheart radio yeah you know? she got advice from bethany and if you just try, try to disappear you're only doing yourself a disservice because bravo is all about redemption that whole cast has done things like that they're all redeemed so she's just robbing herself of the opportunity to have a turnaround well, and to say your side i'm not going to shame someone who wants to disappear but if you want to disappear disappear well, that's she, what I mean. She, podcast. Yeah. You that's, wanna, this is not disappearing. You want to disappear out of that reputation, but you still want the money. You she still wants the want fame. The fame. She wants to walk red carpet. So it's she, like you uh, can't disappear if you want to appear. Like yeah. you're saying, if you want that yeah. life stuff, you want that money, you just totally you rob yourself of that fire. opportunity. And at the end of the day, she did what they all have done. Yeah. She's cheated. Yeah. They're all cheaters. Yeah. It's a yeah. cast of cheaters. The show could be called Vander Cheaters. Like, <laughs> you know, like, it's so, it's, it's easy Except to- Except Katie Maloney. I don't know. Oh, I mean- 
Not to my knowledge. Whatever. Well, there's more seasons you know, to come. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it always we'll comes see. out later. We'll see about her next episode. Um, but yeah, so it's like... Do you it, think they would bring her back? No, they are... They're, I mean, according to my best friend. She's <laughs> in the text. Yeah. That don't I think once you go you. legal with the network, you're yeah. done. Yeah, once you... You're blacklisted. That's once it. you hang with Beth and Nay. Even though I have nothing against Bethany, she's always in my comment section with laugh emojis. I've always enjoyed her. I just like, I don't, I don't get what she's, I mean, she just, she's become kind of obnoxious with her lack of, like, it's so transparent what she's doing and what she, it's just like, I don't know. I just, everything she's doing, I, I, I used to think she made a lot of sense and I kind of respected her, you know, her career, her craft, the same way I look at you guys and mm -hmm. go, they, they fucking, they get it. These are smart, shifty professionals. And like, I don't get Beth. I mean, yeah, we're talking about her, but it's like the, what's the end game here right. for her? And right. it's just, I don't know. It just seems like a weird move on her part. Yeah. yeah. One thing we've never done is beef with networks. We were best friends with the president of MTV. We were drinking with him. We were going out like. One time we did, and it wasn't our fault. Which one? Oh, Paul Telegny? Yeah, with I, with NBC. But it wasn't our fault because we were put in a bad position. We were set up. We were set up. That, so that, that was tricky. Know, and sometimes you do win lawsuits. Okay. Yeah, big time. Is there an NDA there? Or can you talk I mean, about it? I don't know. I don't know. I'll I don't have to know. Like, ask a lawyer. But let's just say, <laughs> sometimes it's, they're not so crazy. But also, we weren't doing it for attention. It was just like a real, like... There needs to something needs to happen. So type of thing. long story short, but it'll be long because I tell everything long. We were this is when the hills was popping the most. Ben Silverman's the president of M NBC. He invites us to dinner. We're like, oh, the president of NBC. We just think he wants to hang out with us because we met him. Because we're so cool. Yeah, like we're like, oh dang, we're going to Giorgio's. <laughs> Nick Cannon's there. Wild and Out hadn't even started, so we were more popping than Nick Cannon at the time. And uh, look how things work out. And so he's like, we have a show we want you guys to do. And we're like, we're already on a show. And he's like, it's this show from England. We're going to bring it here. And we're like, oh, no, we're not going to the jungle. And he's like, no, you just go for like an hour. You'll be in a nice hotel. And we're like, oh, nice hotel, jungle. And just as dumb as we could be. He's like, like you don't really sleep there. This, That's just all for show. You know shows. You're on the hills. On. It's all fake. It's just like, for the. Yeah. So <gasps> we really thought that's what it was. And we're like, oh, no, we have a. Like we're popping right now. Like, yeah, we were busy. We we're in the middle of like a lot of things album, that we we're doing. My rap song. No. Um. So, <laughs> so we get like, to the jungle, right. and he told us we could quit the second we get there. And we're like, "I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here!" And just crickets. There's no producers. You're really in the jungle, and we keep on quitting, and nobody's coming. So now we're freaking out. Like three days of trying to quit. What? And yeah. We're really in the jungle. And we did not agree to this. Like, like was, they're they're killing snakes in the night, <gasps> coming in, having to chop them up, special forces, and you don't see these people. And it was it, it was, was a very real intense. jungle. And yeah. everybody else it looks fine because they went in there like with the mindset, oh, we're gonna do this for three weeks. We went in there for thirty. Like we'll be the first ones out thirty minutes. Like and we're going to the Four Seasons. We got all picked out at Papagayo, and so yeah. that went sideways fast. And then they're drugging us oh. because they're like, go to the nurses tent. And they're just handing us. And we accepted. Yeah, no, I mean, we the, didn't, you're going to hand me a Zanny in the jungle. Right, we're going to take like, it. <laughs> like, the, well, there's no other food. I'm already on it. <laughs> like, hey, so you can't not eat and then get like the, the nurse's medicine. So then we were like, oh, you guys lost it in there. It's like, yeah, yeah we, did. we did. So then, you know, maybe. So I medically had to leave because I was throwing up and really sick. And so they finally, we got out This is out how crazy and... Hollywood is. They're like, oh, we only have 30 grand for you guys to go in. And we're like, oh, for each for, for 30 charity. minutes for you know for charity it was once basically we, free. once it's popping and it's all over like Heidi and Spencer are insane in the jungle and it's like doing ratings they come back and they're like Spencer will give you 875,000 to go back in and Heidi's like in a hospital bed <laughs> right. and, like like thinking it, I'm gonna die you know and, like that's that moment that's like that we're really a couple because if we weren't I'd be like Good luck, honey. <laughs> Hope you don't die in this like in hospital. I'm gonna go get eight seventy five. But it's just the lesson is when they're like, "Oh, it's favored nations. Everyone gets paid the same at any time. They can just hand you almost a million dollars, you know." Which I learned. So now I went in. And they're like, "Everyone gets the same fee for this." I'm like, uh -huh. "No, it's not necessarily true." But so Incredible. then the president pushed me in the jungle. Mm. I can say my truth. Literally, he assaulted me. He was so mad. Because he like had he to fly so all the way. Uh, president of programming, like, not Ben Summer. You cheeky bastard. You cheeky bastard. And <laughs> check me. I was like, oh, payday. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, my neck. 
you flopped. Oh, yeah. my leg. <laughs> oh, my knee. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But it was a bummer because we were on good terms Yeah, with we him were tight. And, and it's like, yeah, you guys bummer. played us, but they thought that we were such professionals. Like, this is the biggest show. It's like, we still don't want to be living in the jungle. And Heidi was sick. You if had she, your limits. If she didn't have the ulcer, we probably could have stuck it out. But, so that was the one time we... You know, we rake, we called it, it for intense. a minute. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> we called it for wow. a minute. These are some great stories, guys. Speaking of giving advice, because I know I asked for yours for Raquel, we have a caller here oh, texting okay. office hours. Okay. Uh, they would love to head hear head some right, perspectives from up my hair. Spencer and Heidi. All right, it's time for texting office hours. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills so you can grow your savings. That whole, like, stop wasting money that uh, you've been wasting, well, check it out. Uh, Rocket Money is helping its members save, on average, $740 a year. I, myself, it helped me save over $1,000 a year on unused apps. Uh, Chances are you've downloaded an app or two a while back, some sort of editing app or some sort of, I don't know, fun app. Maybe it was a game that you used to play that you just forgot and you're still being charged, who knows, 10, 15, 20, 30 bucks a month. It's crazy what you're spending that you don't even realize. Let Rocket Money identify that wasted money that you are spending now and get those things canceled so you can start spending it on things you enjoy and love. Also, it can help negotiate and lower your bills up to 20%. Rocket Money will even, like I said, try to negotiate and lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit your a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. I mean, saving you money and, boy, not having to call customer service, that is what you call a win-win. Also, another thing to love about uh, Rocket Money uh, is their dashboard. Show me. This month's spending compared to last month's spending, so I can clearly see my spending habits, which is good to know. Plus, they've helped me, and they will help you create a custom budget and keep uh, your spending on track. It, it will blow your mind when you get Rocket Money, and you will find out money how much you're wasting. It truly is game-changing for you. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Rocketmoney.com slash V-I-A-L-L. This apostrophe. Few things are more important in this world than your skin quality. Absolutely. And I always say, pretty privilege is the greatest privilege in the world. And when you got great skin, well, chances are you are winning in this world. But the thing about great skin, it doesn't come naturally and easy for everyone. But there's things you can do to improve your skin care situation. Isn't that right, Allie? Yes, because I was just feeling so lost and overwhelmed because I had just moved. I didn't have a dermatologist, but my acne was getting really, really bad at the end of the year. So right before New Year's, logged on to apostrophe. It was really great. Very simple and straightforward because apostrophe will connect you with dermatologists, with skincare professionals. You can have virtual derm consultations and visits, and they provide access to prescription treatments that are then just shipped directly to your door. So for example, I have my oral supplement right here. I have my topical cream and then sunscreen because that's very important. Look, at it's so cute. That is great packaging. (laughs) Stop having to wait weeks, months for your dermatology appointment. And also the convenience and the privacy that Apostrophe offers is unmatched. Also, by the way, can I just say, Ellie, your skin glowing. Fascinating. Apostrophe's goal is to help you feel confident in your own skin, whether you're dealing with breakouts, signs of aging or acne scarring. Apostrophe will help you love the skin that you're in. Apostrophe offers access to prescription treatments for all types of acne, for hormonal acne, facial acne, even back, chest and butt acne. Treat breakouts from head to toe. We have a special offer for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash V-I-A-L-L when you use our code V-I-A-L-L. That's a savings of $15. This code is only available for our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash V-I-A-L-L and click to get started. Then use our code V-I-A-L-L at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. Um, so as most of y'all know, I did just have a baby and I have worn Skims Fits Everybody boy shorts this entire postpartum journey. They are so comfortable. Honestly, their entire Fits Everybody collection is some of their best work. I wear all of it nonstop. Their t-shirts, their bras, their underwear. They have so many things to offer. I recently went shopping in the Fits Everyone collection. I was very intrigued by this unlined demi bra. <gasps> I have that one too. So- it's like so it comfortable. Has, it has the wire, but then it's so comfortable. Mm. I have that one. You too. feel like I you're not it. wearing anything. It's very. And true. then you have like the standard push-up bra, which we love. 
And then I, of course, love my like online, just super loose, stretchy, like comfy go to bed in bras. Like it doesn't matter what you're doing today. You can just pick one. Shop Skims bras at skims.com now available in 62 sizes, 30A to 46H. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know. We sent you, after you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. How's it going? Good. I'm Casey and I'm 23. And um, my ex is obsessed with me and I don't know if I should tell his wife. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's, that's uh, ask any questions you that's want. so funny i was like that's great your ex is so obsessed with you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um how how long has he been your ex um six six years okay and what makes you think he's still obsessed with you not to doubt you at all i'm just i'm trying to get no to, yeah. <laughs> i have no idea i think he's completely delusional but what what he's... actions has he done that make you realize or think that he's obsessed with you what behavior? Oh, he's reached out to me probably seven times in the past year, even though I blocked him on everything I thought I could, and then he'll find new ways to contact me. He's gotten a new phone number to contact me, and I've even threatened to tell his wife multiple times, but she was nine months pregnant the last time, so I just felt like that wasn't a good situation to put her in. Yeah, that, that's fair. I would probably contact the police before his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is he I mean, saying to you? Yeah. What does he say? Like, what is clearly you don't seem interested in dating him or being with him. No. You, you don't. I've see... never given into it, which yeah, you're not makes it even weirder. But he will, like, the first couple times, he would just text me and then delete it, but I'd skip the, like, I would get the notification. And like, then what would it he would say? just say accident. But it probably oh. happened. I have no idea what it said. Um, so then I was just getting annoyed because it was that probably went on for the first three or four times. And then finally I was up while he like texted me one time and he asked if I had a boyfriend. And I just replied back, why does that even matter? You have a wife. And he said, I just can't stop thinking about our relationship. Nope. And I responded, it was three months. <laughs> it like, it wasn't it. even a year. It was a summer. Wow. And Weird. the last time he had a like a fa a different number that I didn't recognize. And he called me and was like, I had been dreaming about you. I still miss us. You have no idea how I feel about you. And I don't think I said a single nice thing. I just went completely off on him, defended his wife. And I was like, you're going to go into bed with your wife right after this phone call. And he's like, that's, you don't understand. It's not like that. What is it like? That's what I said. And then he got really mad and then started spouting off. And I just hung up because this is bizarre alarming behavior i would change my number have you changed your number i love my number why yeah. I don't under, I, yeah, i've said this before i do not understand thing. no one remembers anyone's number prior to 2000 so while you know your number no one knows your number they just have it programmed we now live in, like it's yeah. so easy to change it i think everyone should change a number every six to 12 months and you really kind of reset who your people are kind of makes you take an inventory of who has access to you. You can like all those weird ex-boyfriends or girlfriends, all those fucking solicitation people. Like you, you will remember who you need to be like new number. Here you go. Save this. But Only no, no promise. one knows your number. No one knows your number by heart. No one. Yeah. I Except guess. for him. That would probably be he better. Does. <laughs> <laughs> I think Spencer's right on too with the police. Yeah, like maybe yeah. that would scare uh -huh. me. I think that's not a normal ex. I think that is really scary behavior. I'd also be a little nervous with how his wife would react and like putting yourself in the middle of their relationship, which you don't really want to get into. It's like, yeah, she should know. And it's not fair. She doesn't know. But that is her life, too. And you're not engaging. And if it's not you, maybe it will be somebody else but you got to just worry about yourself and yeah. like your safety and and you because if he is crazy you'll unleash a whole nother level that you don't want to get into he's i think we can say he's crazy. yeah it, i think but so usually in these type of instances i always am curious of like you know when they're like well, i'm thinking about telling their wife or whatever my question is always like what's the reaction you hope to get what's your motivation for doing it most people it's like revenge it's like I, they want to get back you don't seem like you're, you're not here for revenge you're you have no spite everything Heidi said is true but I will say at least like 
you knowing that like this isn't because you feel jaded by him or whatever like you just she needs to know you're like you're not giving that energy but Heidi's right you don't know who you're working with or what you're working against um and she probably she won't thank you usually is the case she won't see you as some hero she will and he's going to lie about right. you in the relationship in the context of that relationship uh and he'll have the advantage uh, that you won't in terms of he's she's going to want to trust him versus she has no reason to want to trust you. So if you haven't changed your number, that is step one. That is the easiest thing you can okay. do. Um, Especially if you've blocked him and he's getting a new number to contact you. You could even yeah. um, you can set your phone where uh, you can't get numbers that you don't have in your phone. So if you want to keep your number, you block him and then. I don't know if it's at least with AT and T call protect. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag you um, Yeah, AT and T. I know you can filter out where you can't. Nobody can just call your number if it's or it gets filtered into like the trash. That's such a tricky situation to be put in. I'm sorry. That sucks. Yeah. All for a terrible summer. <laughs> yeah. Was it even like a good three months or was <laughs> right. it like? No, I was completely. I was not. The feelings were completely one-sided and the minute he went to college i ended it oh. like, finally like i was not a good girlfriend i can tell <laughs> there is nothing you should miss what? about me i was <laughs> awful <laughs> you should be like i cheated no, on I'm not you gonna lie. Yeah. that's what he misses yeah. yeah well do the easy things first and the and, and i know you love your number but like it's super easy to change your number it's and i promise you no one has it memorized but him you know and you yeah like they just have it stored in their phone I barely even know my number by heart. And I bet you could get a new, maybe you go to a new provider. You could get a new deal right now. You could now. get one with like yeah. angel numbers. Like a free like a phone. Five, five, yeah, five. A phone with yeah. it. You got a fresh phone too. Yeah. <laughs> What's your, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do you love it so much? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> oh. Well, I stupidly got my area code tattooed. So like, I don't want to lose the area code because then that would just. I got my, I got the area code in which I was born tattooed to my body. That's fine. Doesn't have to be your okay. number. Yeah, yeah, you're just, just like repping your hometown. Yeah, you're just repping your hometown. I changed my number after I got, yeah. So that's still not an excuse. You could put your new area code <laughs> below it. <laughs> you <laughs> can <laughs> put an X yeah. 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 across. Yeah. 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 Plus. Oh, yeah. No, but like all jokes aside, this guy is weird. And but yeah. like he is not listening to some yeah. very simple requests. And his behavior is very, there's no one more dangerous than someone who's unpredictable. Yeah. Because what he's doing makes no sense. It's also, based off of nothing. Yeah. A it's wife delusion. and a baby. Yeah, but that that's Man. yeah. Yeah. But Red he's unpredictable. Flags. Like it's there's no you can't make heads or tails of his behavior. It's like it's based off of pure delusion. And that's that's really scary because usually you can kind of even the bad people, you can predict certain behaviors based off of like, okay, they've done this or that, they're gonna do this next, and like that's pretty typical. But this guy, like, yeah. who fucking knows? Have you moved or you live in the same place? Um, so I live in a completely different state, but oh, I came down one weekend and he apparently saw me, which kind of freaked me out because I had no idea that he saw me. It's a small town that was that in one of like the messages he sent you or did you find out from like a third party that he saw you? Um, when he called me, he told me he saw me. Um, I honestly think it's worth mm -hmm. maybe talking to a lawyer or some sort of law enforcement per person and understand your rights when it comes to some type of harassment or restraining order. Uh, I, it's worth looking into. Yeah, I didn't know if that was like dramatic. And so then I was, my parents oh, like, like, just send it in. I mean, I'll, I'll, protect I'll, yeah. yourself to the fullest extent yeah. do yeah. not yeah this hopefully is... it is dramatic but like the point is right. you don't really know with this person yeah yeah it mm -hmm. sounds scary it doesn't sound normal it sounds like you need to protect yourself i'd stay as far away from the marriage from everyone you need to just watch your own back i'd also let people know around you mm -hmm. in case he does try to stalk you or find you let your parents know like this is definitely a thing you would like nick saying rather overreact than under because you just don't want to have something really go sideways. Are you in a CCW mm -hmm. state? I'll probably get a CCW. I do. I have like a one that shoots out rubber bullets of tear gas, but What's a CCW I am in a CCW state. state. Concealed carry weapon. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, maybe get yeah, a maybe little, arm yourself. <laughs> yeah, just get a little legal yeah. revolver yeah, in your purse. Get an alarm system uh, at your house. Pepper spray. Do yeah, the simple whatever. things first. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the cops would tell you to change your number. Yeah, I think Nick's right. So just, yeah, one step at a time. But definitely watch out for yourself. I wouldn't be concerned about anything but yourself at this point. But yeah, reaching out to her, I don't think is going to help your cause much. Maybe he wants you to reach out to her. Yeah, it could honestly, be dating yeah. or something uh, weird. And you're just, you're involving you in yourself in yeah. his life and that gives right. him more ammunition yeah. and more reasons to reach <laughs> out. Then you can become the villain. Right. You know, that's, that's messy, but yeah. everything else, I don't think you can overreact when it comes to your safety. Mm-hmm. All right. Good luck. Yep. Yeah. Stay safe. Thanks. God yeah. bless you. Let, yeah. us, let us know what you Is end up doing. Is that door locked yeah. behind you? Yeah. I'm yeah. looking to change my number right after this. If you're still yeah. here in a few months, let us know how it goes. Check here. <laughs> uh, oh, just kidding. But no, seriously, take care of yourself. And um, yeah, you're not overreacting by, you know, he's, it's, this is fucking weird. Yeah. It's cryptic. It's weird. And yeah. There's a 90% chance he's just that weird, but like, I don't know. Do you want to take a 5% chance that he is dangerous? I wouldn't. Yeah, I, don't, I think he's crazy. So. Yeah. All right. Good well, luck. good luck. Protect yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Look into, you know, talk to some lawyers at least. Maybe start there. You know, maybe even if you have a friend who does some legal work, get some legal advice yeah. and then if they tell you to talk to because like the cops it might be tricky because different i don't know but like it get some professional advice <laughs> is what i'm advising you yeah well, spooky will do yeah good luck keep us posted bye. thank you all right bye-bye. Bye. bye really wow. hope this doesn't turn into one of those oh prime, my gosh prime TikToks that's what i was thinking the whole time. And I'm like, oh god this <laughs> is gonna be we didn't give her the right advice and he I feel like we gave her some good advice. Yeah. You were on it from the beginning. Call the police. Yeah. It's like, yes. Uh, this is a that's, murder. That's scary. Totally. <laughs> the headline is So I had a summer with a serial killer and he's still hunting me. Called into uh, Nick Bowles' podcast and Spencer and Heidi gave me advice. Oh my God. Yeah, and I, <laughs> have you guys ever had stalkers? Only one. And I think it was just a convenient stalker because I was at the beach all the time working out. And I think he just happened to be at the beach all the time. This is a great story of uh, her one stalker. Uh, I was managing a professional fighter at the time, and he had his cousin who's like a like a real gangster gangster. And he we're at Cafe Vita, shout out. And the, the stalker rode by on the bike, and Heidi's like, "Oh my god, there's my stalker!" And the, the gangster that was with King Kevin looks at her and he goes, "That's the perks." I'm like, huh? He's like you made it. That's the perks. Like he was yeah, like, like, so you like, have a stalker. Like, yeah, you're fucking you congratulations. Like you did it. Congrats. So okay. that was also perspective. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we've also been like always had a lot of security guards. We've been very well known to have a secure house. You know, like we're not people that you really want to mess with. You know, that we're armed. You know, like I think that people don't really want to come to our house. CCW. I mean, <laughs> okay. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, I mean, love America. The um, what are they called? The those oh, the burglar bling bunch, ring, the bling ring came to out. our house yes. and they saw us they and around. they turned around they and they left. Really? Yes. Like, yes. Is that a true story? Yes. Yeah. It's in the police report. How do they know they turned around? They, oh, they said they it's they in were, the like, yeah. it's in the like. So the we, act. y'all saw them? Mm, no. I mean, I think they, they just saw, saw how we went in and out of the house back yeah. then. Yeah. And, you know, mm-hmm. it was very like, militant. Yeah. I mean, we had like a. They were like, oh, shit. We were running around. Give them everything. God. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I don't think they wanted any. You guys are truly like in the uh, zeitgeist of like pop culture history. I don't think you guys get enough recognition for how influential you guys have been over the years. Thank you. We're not done, okay? Yeah, I'm like, a pop it's not, star. We're just actually starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, just, I just want you guys to get the cred coming that you guys out have. soon. It's about to drop. Um, when is this new show coming up? I mean, even if it doesn't, we're going to. We China. have pitch meetings you know, coming up. We're going to China. Well, Heidi is famous in China. Her mm-hmm. music is doing like two billion streams a day in China. Damn. So, worst case, is this? Are you being for real? Yeah, this is for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And actually, I'll right now, it. I think I'm what twenty nine on the Italian charts. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah. 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 So thank That's you. Amazing. So yeah. So You're actually, like the most famous pop star I've ever been. Is this That's on great. like Spotify? Oh, yeah, she's on got Spotify. a million, 200,000 monthly listeners. I love that he knows 50, all of her stats. 50 million streams on the CEO. Yeah, that's, that's called Love and Support. Yeah. 11.5 million on Apple Music, 1 million Shazams. <laughs> Shazam. And then on TikTok, on just one song, 
933 million streams <gasps> and then 519,000 creates. It's just when somebody posts. Do you song. have any notes for Sheena Shea's music career? We just added her to our playlist. Yeah, actually. we did. We Good as gold. Yeah, um, uh, I think that, you know, just keep coming with the music. Just right? keep, stop. Keep coming. Yeah. Well, the difference between respectfully her music and Heidi's music, we spent two million dollars on Heidi's music back in the day. So we got all Britney Spears' writers, we got Christina Aguilera, Mariah Carey's producers, we got uh Beyonce's mixers, we got you know, so we that was one thing we did invest in that's it wasn't now your paying ex-husband. off. Yeah. It was that was like a that was actually a smart move we did. Yeah. Because it's like hits. That's that 401k. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's that Bitcoin. <laughs> Retirement that's Montana that boys. Ethereum. Right, right. Uh, so thankfully that's hitting. So we're working on a new album right now. New single coming out. Scandalous. Hell it's breaking yeah. news. Damn. Scandalous. Yeah, yeah. Can we get a little sneak peek? I mean, yeah. Do we, I'll send you the link to post on all socials. We're happy to promote. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, just start one of your episodes with it. Um, but yeah, everything's, I, we think the show will sell because Alon it, thinks it will. it's a comedy. I think you guys and need it, to be on TV and Thank you. we're going to burn down like what people think about reality. T- you know, it's a real, it's gonna be a real show. It'd be very meta. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah, gonna yeah, be, yeah. Yeah. It's going to show the working. Like, Alon, you better be ready to be on camera. Yeah. Like Heidi, <laughs> Heidi scared him. Well, <laughs> oh, oh, I, zoom if it's like, ha- I, I don't usually, can we have a cameo? Can we? Yeah! Oh my gosh, we love that. Text him after this, please. Yeah. Just get him a little bit like, I want to be on a yeah. little cameo. With, yeah, you know, just text him. Get him, him, get him yeah, a little yeah. bit more excited because okay. he's yeah. popping now with his horror movie. So he is I'm worried in he's the horror little, genre. I'm worried he's a little he said, momentum. He said he's excited. I know, but he said when, he thinks. When you're in got yeah. movies all of a sudden. But, you know, one thing I'm actually, they don't know about, I can break it here because it's a bigger podcast. I've talked about it on our podcast. Can't wait but, to hear this. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to be a movie star. Oh, oh. right. This is true. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, congratulations. Uh, yeah. Please, I have, Bill. I have yeah. a Please, movie. Uh, can you elaborate? Yeah, I have a movie with James Franco that we're working on together. Oh. So, Funny story about James Franco. Oh, please drop Are it. Are you going to one-up him? We'll finish yours. No, that's... No, I no, just, no, let's get the one-up. I would let's want, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, it, it might... Connect. It might connect. I actually oh. think it might, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, Natalie was throwing me a birthday party. Last year. <laughs> not my most recent birthday but the birthday before, before. Uh, it was a surprise birthday party it was one of those surprises where I was like I think Natalie's throwing me a party but like you know she's like you gotta stay out of the house um, so I went and guested on a podcast and then the party was not ready so I, me and my friend Marcos we were told to kill some time so I took Marcos to one of my favorite uh, smash burgers uh, in LA um, Burger She Wrote and Burger She Wrote is you know are you familiar? yeah so little little shop and then you eat like basically on a sidewalk and we were just eating and here's james franco uh holding a paper bag and like kind of running uh and then he like locked eyes with me and he's like hey man you're nick Viall. and i'm like yeah you're james franco and he's like i was just thinking about you whoa <laughs> and he was and it seems sincere wow. and, and then he started he pitching me like this movie idea about reality tv stars and okay. he thought like maybe I would be a fit. He's like, give me your he number, and I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, and I he gave me his number, and uh, I actually, uh, I, what did I text him back? You texted him like a gif of himself. Yeah. Uh, so why didn't you follow through? Because you can still be in the movie. Yeah, maybe you should text him right movie, now. And be like Spencer the, the, Pratt. Yeah, yeah is text on me like, so can I be in the movie still? Can I be in the I movie? I said Nick V. He's a, a great to me. He texts back, great to meet you, my friend. I'll be in touch, James. And then I sent him this text, this gif of himself, like winking. winking. <laughs> and then he wrote, he sent a T T Rex. Uh... You should text <laughs> and now him. He text with text Spencer. Him right now, with Spencer I want to be in the movie. I don't know if I want to be in the movie. I think you do. I think you do. It's a big movie. Text uh, him right now. I'm just kind of sending a you know, picture it could be of a you. Little cameo. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to yeah, like, send him a picture. It's not going to mess your podcast schedule up. Uh, let's see. Here. Yeah, like you camera. You smile big. Oh, no. You know, you got to play it cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Get confused. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, why are you taking a picture of me? Uh, Spencer says, what's up? No, Spencer no, says, no, I'm Spencer can be says, in the movie. Yes. Spencer that says, sounds desperate. No, no it's not. With, uh, with I have best Spencer. friends with James now. We are like, Spencer, Spencer says, says, I need to be in the movie. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, yeah. need to be. <laughs> this is like our own texting office yeah, hours. Yeah, 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 <laughs> this is yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. He is going to love it. Uh, 
Um, Are we going to get a live James Franco text back? On we might. Ball falls? Yeah. Is he a fast texter? Is he? It depends. He's on mm-hmm. set right now. Oh, busy. Yeah. But then, and then I left, and I saw him like half. He was like, again, I wasn't sure if he was working out because he had a paper bag with him. So funny. And I like in the middle of a it. workout, and then he was like walking home, and that's so funny. Know, yeah. Yeah. So this is well. Maybe be, y'all could be co-stars. No, he's. You're definitely in the movie now. It's meant to be. You know. Wow. Is he on the up and up? Is he on the? I mean, up? as far as I'm concerned, once you're nominated for Academy Award, you, know, you can't get canceled. Yeah. I, I won't even use that word, but I'm also not his crisis negotiator. So, uh, uh, that's not well, my role. Congratulations you know, on yeah. being a movie star. We'll discuss yeah. that in the film. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. And, and uh, producer. Maybe I'll see yeah. you once. <laughs> yeah, well, I am a producer of the film, so oh. are you? You know, I'll make sure you get a good Oh, good so video. You don't, we don't even ask, uh, have to ask James. No, no a, you're no. in. You're that's the thing. It's not yeah. really asking James. It's saying Spencer says you're in the movie. Like, that's right. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So this was the movie he was referring and to. And I've, I've heard. Because it was like a very bizarre conversation because first I'm like, it's why is James Franco it's, it's real. like breaking up his workout to like pitch me an idea? And it's, then it, it's it wasn't, and then it never really went anywhere. He's almost like a did magician. You get, did he text you back? He did. Yes. Oh. Um, yep. He says. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's so yeah, it's, it's That's like, true. he's obsessed with, uh, he loves reality he does, television. Yes, he's I, yeah. had this idea to how to, make this film and then once i heard i was like well guess what i've also obsessed with reality television and i want to be a movie star so it worked out perfect yeah i i I already am a movie star which movie were you in uh let's see a christmas cruise starring vivica fox oh good for you lucky christmas Uh, movie there's a movie called the list i i do play myself in that what's the who's in the list what's that one halston stage yeah <laughs> All right, so already we wow. start. Yeah. Uh, so oh, he's not done yet. Oh, oh, you know, oh I, I have a few oh, credits. Yeah. I got, I got five or six movie, credits. Dad, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. So uh, well, then you're ready for this. I'm ready. Yeah. We don't no, even I'm, need to write your I've, uh, script. Yeah, I've taken up. the classes. I've done the work. I have a craft. You know, I, I'm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's so meant to be the the one I end with that last story, and then you have the story of him trying to get you to do it before me. So I was like the second. I, I, oh. And I really apologize. I was not trying to one up no, you. But I did not w- realize it's that. It's meant to be that yeah. now we've come together. It's a collaboration. Yeah. I feel like we, we should have been friends a long time ago. I, 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 I like your vibe. You know, oh, I appreciate so nice. that. But I don't leave the house. So <laughs> it's like, a, I don't like, want to be. Yeah, like, like, I mean, I get it. So. Yeah, like, like, we can be like, yeah, like friends. Like, I don't mean like friends. actually hang yeah. out. Spencer is actually a really good texter and phone caller. Yeah, like, we I, don't leave the oh, house much yeah. either. Yeah. We're very so much all his friends are uh, Unless virtual. you want to meet at Palisades <laughs> Air One, like we could do like okay. the hot bar line. And like but can we? Up. Can I tell people we're friends? Well, you can say we're co movie stars. Now. That's there you go, colleagues. Co-stars. So yeah, co-stars. so he's like, are no, but we can be it, colleagues. Yeah, are you keeping it? Well, so we got to keep it professional until after the movies, you know. Okay. And then you need to press okay. together. Yeah, like we'll be like in, uh, we'll be like Timothy Chalamet and um, Zendaya and Elvis, oh. um, Austin Butler, Austin Butler, how they're doing the TikToks promoting the movie. Yeah, together. And like, oh, hey, yeah. Yeah. who's who? I could be either. I'm cool. Oh. I will, you know, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Win-win. Oh, Rich movie star. Palisade you know, boys. Yeah. You guys Palisade gotta start here. Yeah. Yeah. Palisade boys. Yeah. Boots next time. Yeah. But that's exciting. That's meant to be. We so. sh- we are th- we're looking for new houses. Should we move to the Palisades? It if would, you could find a place. That's what I'm saying. Isn't it like yes, super expensive? It's so limited. you guys move to the Palisades, our show will sell. <laughs> So, oh my gosh, you could be maybe just, just rent on a house show. for the show on the movie on the show. If we could instead could be, of Valley, what are they doing the on Bravo? Palisades, we the could Sades. do the Palace, the Sades. the Sades. I have the best mom group, <laughs> but Spencer never wants to like go out of the house and like be social with Heidi's it. But we got some ringers, we're looking, so. we're looking for like cool people with kids. We have, you I got, have the coolest friends with kids. Palace is your yeah. only option because, like, I, I, as much as we're homebodies, I, I, I want my kid to socialize. Yeah, you exactly. can't be with the kids. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I say that, but we're my schedule is like Gunner, I'm a yeah, freaking nanny. Yeah, yeah, it's a babysitter. I know. Um, I'm like, you're not yeah. the babysitter. You're the dad. Yeah, <laughs> oh, there's so a, he keeps forgetting that. Yeah, you're not yeah the if babysitter. you wanted to potentially do a show about your life, we could do the dirty work part. Yeah, yeah. And you guys could be the more like you just come mm, in like, oh, oh, we're so normal and nice and like cool and, and then, easy with no drama. You know, so we don't way, not drama. It's not. It's funny. So technically, funny. now we could have a movie and a show. Nick but could like mediate your like uh, arguments. 
y'all ever have like marriage well, they don't arguments. want me to date we, we don't really you argue know, no. when you have a boss in the like there's not really it's just like, like yes ma'am type of thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay <laughs> i keep yes, all feelings in consideration when i make plans <laughs> So, it's you know, okay. you just got to figure out roles in a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I know what's best, you know, you know for yeah. everybody. And it just, yes, I don't want do. the pressure of all the decisions. So I'm fine. I did my... learn that. We both need People opinions like, and balances. We're so fucking pants in your relationship. I'm like, <laughs> I wear shorts <laughs> every day for a reason. Okay. I'm cool. Not <laughs> nice and breezy. <laughs> so. I like you know, my, my legs Yeah, up. it's all fine. Well, you guys it. seem super happy. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we're going to be even happier when we're rich and famous. Yeah. <laughs> we're on our way. We're going to yeah. get jets. They're coming. Yeah. The we're momentum's pop here. Star, a lot of things. Movie star, yeah, TV together. stars. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, we, I feel like we could talk for hours, but we don't. Uh, yeah, to go. All right, we gotta we pick gotta, up the kids. Right. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. got to pick up the kids. We have to go. Do you think their divorce is real? I don't. I've heard so many. You know, I'm an internet person, so I'd heard so many <laughs> allegations <laughs> for so long that you know, but maybe enough's enough if that's real. And now he still has to pay for the kids, so she's not going to like air out what he did and right. like keep the, you know. But we did a fake divorce, and you can only do that storyline. For a minute, and then right. it's like, okay, now it's like. Do you I think Jax at... Taylor and Brittany are having I think a fake that's divorce? Real. I, I don't think, think so. Well, he came on our podcast, and the energy was very like, oh, you know, it's hard for him. It was saying the marriage and the kid. It was a lot of pressure. It's hard it seemed, for, him. It's a lot. for him. It was. It's a lot. It right. Like a so lot. he seemed, yeah. Did not seem a like tired good acting, when he got there. You know. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. And I, when he left, I thought, wow, that's. That was a lot of energy. I was like, I've never said that about you. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> he was talking about shit about either. Either. Yeah, Not well. really. No, it wasn't. Out. It wasn't yeah, about yeah. her. It was yeah. just that it's a lot, and it's it can be overwhelming. And I was like, well, yeah, and. That's just not how I feel, you know. Well, when you're a horrible person, like I mean, he's not a good guy. I mean, I I I have no experience. I don't know for him sitting across me, and it's like I didn't follow the show enough to know, so I can't be like. That's Nick is basing his opinion off of family. Oh yeah. Also, is it like is he not a good guy, or is he just not good in relationships? Because he seems nice, right? He seems like he's making a show in a sense too. He gets the producing side of it. He was, you know what I mean? Yeah, but so when I don't you know. start like bringing innocent civilians, so so to speak, and like start literally fucking with them. And yeah. what are you talking about? Checks. About the Brittany? innocent civilians. I mean, like, you know, he's he's had affairs upon affairs. I mean, yeah. season two, he had sex with the sex worker, gaslit. I mean, he's like, he's mm. doing real shit uh, that's, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. over that's and true. over and over. It'd be like if Scandival happened every season and that's it, why he's like, like he what? seemed very mad that he was the cheater and didn't get rich and famous off yeah yeah, well, yeah and i could i felt that for him i said pick the you wrong should get one that I guess. trophy yeah, you like, should you get the cheater star. trophy it is true but uh you know he was he was nice to us yeah so. i've only seen like a season of vanderpump the only scene i've seen of him is when he ripped off his shirt like that first season right. he's in the parking lot and he's like, oh, and, and and like yeah fake fought and like yeah. hugged the guy yeah that yeah. was a great scene yeah. Yeah. so we're not well all right guys we gotta go okay, uh, yeah. it's so Bye. great how you are scream guys. superficial on spotify <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't forget to send your questions at ask nick of the Fo- what in in your show we don't have a show yet. Your podcast. Oh, <laughs> Spidey 16th Minute every Tuesday or Wednesday. 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 Oh. Whatever Check it out. Check it out. Like, we yeah. TV show or TV people. Yeah, you're, right you're thinking big. Yeah, you're thinking movies. TV. I almost said the name too. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, it's a secret. Oh. The right. name's Get so out of good. here, Spencer. Right. Right. Shut Bye, it. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.